right, I think we got everybody. We'll call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I know we had one amendment to the agenda. We wanted to move, uh, well, we wanted to add an executive session. And then coming out of the executive session, we'll move um, Paul's <clears throat> Paul's resignation pieces towards the end of the meeting. So when we come out of executive session, then we can make the motion on the map. Okay. <clears throat> so the executive session is separate, but we'll put Paul stuff after. After. Or yeah. it's regarding. It's the discussion of. Do mind before. Yeah. Before. Okay. Okay. Or we could, yeah, we could just move to yeah, the end. Just before executive session. Okay. Perfect. So move Paul just prior to the executive session. Okay. Move to approve the agenda as amended. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <clears throat> we do have a appointment for 605. So if Owen is on, I see he but hi y'all. Hello? Hi Owen. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, good, good. Um, I'm actually unfortunately driving right now, which is why my video is not on. <laughs> um, okay. But thank you so much. Um, yeah, I I think the um, application speaks for itself pretty clearly, but I, I, I we've never done this before. So I don't know if the board has questions for me on behalf of the Equity and Inclusion Committee. I think just... Um, Briefly, this is a really exciting um, grant opportunity. It's the first grant of its kind that's being offered through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and the State Office of Racial Equity and Inclusion. Um, it's, the money is being funneled through the Vermont Community Foundation. Um, and it's essentially going to help us be able to do some of the larger community conversations and learning together that I think we've talked about with you and have heard your suggestions on doing um, doing that type of work. So hopefully it'll be able to open, open up those opportunities. I also think it's one of those grant opportunities that, um, as you probably know from other grants, once you apply for one thing, it kind of opens up the door for other funding opportunities, both through these through the state office and through the Vermont Community Foundation. And when I did talk to the grants manager there at VCF, she was really excited. And I think we kind of fit the town that they don't have a lot of applications from. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't know if folks have questions or what's needed as far as um, on your end for this this process for a committee grant so i made the change on our copy of the 2022 grant because you had amount had requested had been 6740 but i changed that to the 10,000 like we talked or emailed about owen um great no matching funds required um <clears throat> since you haven't done a grant with the town um i was looking at your project budget i'm assuming that a lot of the money uh, where you do food, child care, presenters and fac and facilitators that you will be hiring people to do that work? Yeah. Um, so some of the presenters are um, folks who are already either in the committee or regularly attend our meetings, but we'll also have some outside contractors like the person um, who could facilitate the the history of um, Vermont's connection to slavery and the abolition movement. We're talking with some historians at different colleges about that. Um, the child care, um, we're, um, yeah, it would be somebody um, from the community who has experience with child care, um, just setting up wh wherever the space is that that event's happening and having some like fun activities for kiddos to do. Um, with yeah. food, we would want to work with um, local food vendors. We'd probably be doing a lot with Cockadoodle and the sandwich shop. Um, okay. So yeah, so, I, I realize that's probably a lot on your end to have that many. <laughs> well, that many. Uh, yeah. What we'll yeah. do is this: if you are awarded the grant, then you and I will sit down and go through the grant agreement before I sign it. 
to make sure okay. that you can, in fact, adhere to all the, you know, because it's going to be, you're going to need to get, if their business is proof of insurance, W-9s. So what we'll do, Owen, is if, if the select board approves your application and you get it, then you and I will go through the grant agreement line by line, make sure that, you know, we both are in agreement and understand how the money works and okay. all that. And then it'll just be easier for both of us if we do it together. Sounds Sound great. okay? Oh, good. Yep. So I don't have any questions. I don't know if the select board does, but thank you for filling out the uh, summary document. I appreciate that. Definitely. I thought the um, the descriptions and the scope of work read really well and you know it was clear, it was concise. It fills the gaps that I think you your group and this board have identified that we want to work on. And yeah, I hope that you do get it. Vote for it. Yeah, my only concern is that we establish the the rules and regulations about how the money's collected and distributed exactly. and, yep. and all that kind of stuff to make sure it's all yep. yeah. eyes dotted and T's crossed. But yeah, it's a great opportunity. Go go if for it. This, if you do it, you're going to be busy boy. Yeah. So it sounds sounds good. Like you need a motion to approve. Or I don't know if we need a motion, but yeah, usually do. So just a motion to approve the um, submission EIC's submission of the grant. So moved. Second. Hey, all in favor? Uh, aye. All right. Looks like you're all set, Owen. So drive safe. Thank you all so much. We're really excited. I appreciate you all. Our, our, so you're going to submit this, correct? And then just CC me when you, because or actually no. Yeah. I, I guess actually you and I need to talk. When are you coming? Yeah. When is this thing due? Um, it's a rolling admission. Um, so the sooner the better. But um, okay. yeah, any anytime this week or next week, I think would be great. And we, we're going to have to set up an account with the Vermont Community Foundation just to be able to submit it through gotcha. their portal. That's but, right. I saw that. Yeah. So I will do that um, at the end of this week, beginning of next week, because we're, okay. uh, we're short staffed. But um, so I yeah, I saw that. That's right. So I'll take care of that. And get it submitted okay. and then i'll send you an email once it's done okay awesome and i did update the um the google doc it does have the correct grant amount but everything else is the same as what i sent you so we're good yeah perfect okay. i got it. all right i will be sure to do that sir okay thank you all have a good night you have a good too. night all right we'll move forward to public comments so public comments an opportunity for anybody that wants to comment on whatever um Usually that's not associated with the agenda. So if there's anything, I don't see anybody else online. Um, so if there's anybody in person that has any comments or suggestions or. Good luck, sir. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, there you go. Oh, good. I'm not sure you heard I you. But... That no, no, you're fine. Um... And then if you have anything for public comment, just make sure you state your name. So we have for the record. That's oh, all. Vincent Burkino. Oh, okay. Vincent. Oh, he's on the agenda. That's right. With the mask, I didn't recognize you. Do you guys have any questions or just wanted to see what we were all up to? Or Yeah, we recently moved here. Nice. Uh, Mitchell Wentz recently moved. And... Oh, good. Yeah, and uh, we were just looking to get involved in the town. Great, um, sure. And yeah, I'd have an interest in the trail building stuff I've seen. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, I guess kind of historically for many years now, and it seems like you're kind of plugging away a little bit on that. And then yeah. the Bethel better block also yep. seems like Bethel Brawl. Yeah. We did. We got a we were awarded a three hundred and thirty thousand dollar grant. So we will be doing some trail building and mm -hmm. stuff. And um if you look on the website, um, I'm Therese Kirby, I'm the town manager. If you send me an email with your information, I can get you looped in with the people that you know that do the trail building and stuff if you're interested. Um I know a little bit is coming out of the rec committee, but um, certainly that VoRec group for the outdoor grant will be looking for people and um, the more the merrier. Oh, we have openings. We have a shooting range that needs help. We have uh, equity inclusion committee, planning commission, development review, you name it, we've got a spot to put you in. The energy, so, energy committee yeah, that, the energy committee, that's right. We you, you name it, we have a committee, but if you just go on the website or call the town office and um, 
is there send me an email and and I'll definitely connect you with those folks if you'd like. And pretty much all the committees are yeah are open to new members at any time. We are yeah. not in a position where we say we have too many. We have to yeah. turn away. And and if you really are you know aspirations are into you know maybe some outdoors or trail type things, then you know I would definitely suggest the, either conservation yeah. uh, com committee or the rec committee would would yeah. be good ones to look at. And I know both of them, you know, seek, yeah. seeking members. So yeah, because they they usually meet marriage. like once a month mm -hmm. um, formally, and then you know they go about doing you know little projects on the side and stuff like that. So yeah, because two of the guys that do trails are on conservation, Farron and mm -hmm. and Chris. Um, but yeah, so we have all sorts of stuff. Sure. Much like this, their meetings are open to the public, so you can attend a meeting and kind of feel out the group, yeah. see if it's a good fit. Yeah. Usually that's what we suggest is go to a meeting or two and see if you're interested before you like formally commit Jump in. and stuff. Yeah. So, but if you need anything, swing by the town office or call the town office, somebody will point you in the right direction, but I'm so glad you guys came. This is great. Welcome to that's right. Cool. Absolutely. Are you, you hiding your hat now or? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Uh, just down past Bethel Mills on St. Oh, nice. Yep. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice neighborhood. Cool. All right. All right. Anything else public comment wise? I don't still don't see anything online. So no. hearing none, we'll move forward. Uh, we did have a uh, resignation uh, from the EIC, um, David Fair. So we'll just need a motion to accept that. We'll move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then on the opposite of that, we got Vincent that's, that's looking right. to, <laughs> to be a part of uh, the Energy Committee. So, mm -hmm. right. Anything in particular you want to tell us about yourself or why, what the Energy Committee, you know, why you're interested in that or? Well, yes. It's, um, I have some ideas on how maybe Bethel can improve it. You have more green energy, but uh, it's nothing I can do alone. <laughs> so I would like to join the energy committee to help out and be helped. Okay, that's great. And then the energy committee, just for, for you guys is not not every town has an energy committee. Um, so, for instance, our neighbors um, to the south in Royalton, they don't have one. So they actually have a a resident of Royalton that that volunteers on our committee. Um, so, and I, I think we have four active members right now. I think Vincent would know because he four. goes. So let's right. see. There's Vincent. Then there would be. Yeah, I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he might make <laughs> four. So. And, and a lot of times the committees, they fluctuate, they, yeah. you know, they get as low as two or three and maybe as high as six or seven depends on, you know, the ebb and flow of, of things. So, so unless anybody has any comments or anything, we'll just, just need a motion to accept Vincent uh, onto the energy committee. So moved. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome. That's right. Thanks, Vincent. Take care. You yes, too. Right. Take Have care. Take your email. I sent you one. He said. All right. We move Paul's down the road. So next we have Bethel Library Association request for a coin drop. There. April they they must really want that spot because it's out there. So April twenty second, I guess it's theirs. I'm open it. Yeah, we should, <laughs> I was just gonna say we have a snow day. That's kind of a. I saw the date and laughed. But. Yeah, I saw it, and I first I said, "Wow, they're doing one kind of late this year." And I said, "Oh, that's next year." Yeah, I don't know. They were on it. so. It's funny. So I guess as long as that works in the calendar that you guys keep, yeah. And, uh, Turn about. Yeah, they um, you know, we we talk about this a lot, so I. A motion to accept there's permit conditions that not everybody the, always follows so we need to the only thing i want to bring yeah. up and i doubt that they'll have anybody out there but the and i'm trying to think which one it was there was one of them that happened yeah. wasn't the auxiliary but the one Laundry before age. that had some 
underage that individuals was, that were right, in the right of way. That was the rec so, and I spoke to Ellie okay. and reminded her of yeah. the rule as it is the conditions that they're signing off on mm -hmm. that Kathy signed off on and adhered to. And so they I'm also just, provide a plan because I told Kelly, no more slacking. Everybody's got to. Yeah, I think that would be the only. Yeah, and I did speak with Ellie about that. She had no idea. It wasn't when she was there. So I just told her moving forward. It's like, yeah. we'll I mean, there, there's out. no reason why underage can't be present but can't be in the road yeah it specifically well, states no one under the age of six exactly. yeah <clears throat> yeah i told her there was a couple issues and she was on it so okay so they need proof of insurance yes because they are not a town committee okay. they're their own hmm. and we have to wait till we have that I, we just going to make a motion to accept just saying that condition yeah right there yep yeah yep. adhering to the permit conditions plus yep. proof of insurance yeah okay just need a motion to accept the Bethel Library Association to hold a coin drop on April 22nd, uh, as long as they adhere to the permit conditions with proof of insurance. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And White River uh, Conservancy baseline documentation yeah. for the Bethel floodplain restoration. I spared you. River corridor. You I saw river <laughs> corridor and my heart skipped a beat because I'm like, oh, this is a flashback. I'm like, how many meetings is this going to take? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is, is it, it's not quite the step where it then becomes townland, or is this now this? Are we now at the phase where? we're sort of finalizing this. No, what it says here is during the closing acquisition, they, Vermont River Conservancy, neglected to bring copies of the final baseline documentation report, the BDR. Enclosed, you'll find two signed copies of the BDR. One is for your records and the mm -hmm. other needs designed for us. So no, this isn't um, formality. So this is that. This is not, no, this is not. I, I think if yeah. I think if everything goes well next year, it's signed back over to us. Yeah, so we have so many years. Exactly. It was like, is this yeah. well, took us like getting there? <laughs> I mean, it took us like two years just to put the ship in the right direction. Yeah. So, so no, so I, well, they gave us two copies. So Chris has to sign in both places, but I just gave you the pertinent information. I didn't send you all these like photos and right. I just figured you're like, no. No, it makes a lot more sense because there were parts that referred to it as the Billadoo property, but and it is I, no longer. The Billadoo sent property. you the cover letter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How good. Yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure. yeah. So, yeah. So, you just need to, so you need to make a motion authorized Chris to sign in six places. Okay. I'll come back. So I just need a motion to authorize myself to sign on behalf of the board. I'll move. It's in the property across from the firehouse. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Here's one. Yeah, so we went through a big battle to conserve that land because it's a floodplain so it's been multiple years in the works of getting it conserved and part of that is uh the vermont conservancy is doing a ton of work to repair and then conserve the riverbank so eventually when that's all done it'll come back to the town for ownership but at the moment it's not our land so it's sort of we're in a weird phase but it's been a weird phase for multiple years so a lot of back and forth and we are going to So, yeah, yeah. Well, that big chunk of property. Rick's, uh, yeah. We're going to sign it to do it again because we have their copy plus our copy. I saw this back at Pam. She took one look at it. Said, oh, I really God, this is yours. She said, like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Yeah. No, it's a little convoluted. No, it's a Great. That's that all of them. Fine. The last thing that looks like coffee had cloud. Okay. And then we'll just move forward, uh, continuing our budget discussion. Um, at this point, now we have the, well, 
the complete first run of the budget yeah, put together. Exactly. Um, so, scary so everything thing. has been thrown against the wall that we wanted to have. So this is, I also gave you just because it's the past and I had also given you the tax rate. Mm. So obviously I don't have the school tax rate. And I based this on the municipal grand list, of, which is the something called the 411, which the listers generate. So I think I did the math right, Chris. I think I don't know. Something's not adding up to me. So well, not, maybe not to, no, I didn't have a chance to get with uh, no, you busy. this weekend yeah, and stuff. No, no, but you're busy. So I something I, in the numbers doesn't add up to me, and I don't the know. The 19390. Well, a combination of the that's what I want. Percent of budget, the penny. Like, I'm not sure my math is right. So I need to dig into that a little okay. bit. I mean, I, I think see around that last time, as I took the, um, I basically divided the general fund budget by the. Yeah, because I can't remember my math, but I, anyways, I think we were about nineteen thousand a penny. Because as it stands right now, if if the numbers are correct, which I there's something's off. Yeah, because you have to divide um, it by. If it 100. was, you're looking at seventeen cent increase in the tax rate. All right, because yeah, so, you'd be which, looking at. I mean, I know it's steep, but it's yeah, it something in the numbers doesn't make sense, sense to me, okay. and I know it must be then. It could, this and this could number be. is as of today. Yeah. Before the addition to the grand list that they're anticipating, right? Well, this is at the grand list that they have right now at and seven a, point. And the thing that doesn't here. Sure. make sense to me is up until about two or three years ago, mm -hmm. it was 19,006, okay. almost 198 per penny. So, so it should be higher than so that. So it should be, yeah. So my math, okay. So I had divided. Again, I was on the, the road, but I... Yeah, but we'll I came up with maybe twenty thousand eight hundred. Okay, that could be. Um, yeah, that might be better because I took. But that still doesn't put. Uh, that only puts us at instead of seventeen at twelve cents, but it's still, still a little bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because we so. averaged about a percent was about a penny. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So that's fine. Well, that it's, it, a, it gets challenging because some people talk pennies and some people, people talk, talk percentage. percentages. So and, and they don't always follow so even without that how much we raise on a penny for the tax rate this still works the still the general fund amount the local agreement is going to depend on who actually got a veterans exemption uh -huh. but if you look at the general fund that is our current that's the proposed budget amount yep. and if i take that amount mine um and do the math for the multi you know the current municipal grant list it is a 4.76 percent increase now i talked to mo and judy and they are expecting a bigger increase than what they have, than what I've currently based, used for a grand list number. So I guess my point being is it's not horrible because last year we ended up adding more money into the budget. There was growth in the grand list. So our normal 3%, we were actually under. So when I knew you were going to see the budget and be like, Ooh, but once you multiply it out on the tax rate, it wasn't as bad as, as we thought. But yeah, so this is basically taking everything. And I had some questions for you to answer um i mean i was just looking at just inflation related yeah things. I know. well i, I, yeah. I don't want to just use the name re inflation but things like uh Diesel. increase in uh benefits yeah over last year and then some things like salt and things like cool. that being more expensive diesel yeah. and stuff just those increases that we will say don't have control over right exactly that yeah. that right now is like three to four cents increase on yeah and just that been, alone yeah. and we've been part of work trying to make sure mm -hmm. that the volunteer conditions yeah. those stipends are mm -hmm. more reasonable right exactly. so i know we always kind of look to see what are those uncontrolled costs that are going up yeah look like so I mean, right now we're. I know usually our goal on the board is is to keep ourselves at three pennies or less. Yeah, kind of is what we've kept to over the years. I know this year is a you what, know an extraordinary. What does that different like year translate to? If we're if we're going to just be speaking in cents, can we? Well. Well, it's right now, if we left point the... seven six, which usually we're usually saying if it's percent or cents are usually interchangeable. Okay. So you'd be looking at almost a five cent. And see, I I come up with higher than that. But, but... that's how I just yeah. So I'm... yeah. So we'll have to look at the math again on the. How I come many... up with higher because the well the net cost 
if you take the cost difference is 300 387,000 over the previous year. Yes, all I And then the revenue is only increased by 44, so it's it's a net difference of 343. Yes. So when I raise like 17 cents on the tax So rate. when I calculate the taxes, obviously I'm looking at a 13.2% right. over last year. But once I put my number in here against the increase in the grand list mm -hmm. that I was given by the listers recently, then, then well, I I, think that's that... how I come up with, I'm saying 4.76 over last year. Gotcha. So, so, you're so at yeah. So if you look at the difference, yeah. yes. is a current year's Right. Current so if you see, day. here's our current column, here's last year and the difference. So I'm looking at a 4.76% increase over last year's. Right. Gotcha. Right is what I'm saying. And like I said, I was just kind of doing that because when I look at 13.2%, your hair stands on end. But, so but, but would... that's before we've done any adjusting. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Literally. That's just, I just thought you should know coming yeah, out of the gate. I got a lot of questions about. Yeah, that's fine. We'll go I through know. them all. I just wanted you to know when you saw 13.2, what we were looking at, but well, so why don't we... revenues first. If everybody's good with it, I guess the way I was thinking about doing it was um, why don't we try to not dive into the weeds weeds tonight, but let's hit the higher level thing. So yeah. I'll make an example. If we think that the constable budget is too high based upon the options that we have, should we at a macro level figure out what, you know, do we want to increase it in the budget? Do we want to keep it the same? Do we want to essentially warn that as a separate item? You know, yeah. And then the little stuff like a thousand dollar correction here, two thousand yeah. dollar correction there, we can probably dive into, you know, yeah, at the mine, next one. Mine are all bigger yeah. than the big Well, ones. and that's fine. So, are you guys good with that? If we, so I wasn't paying any attention. Just right. talking I'm about to separate you two. That's just I know. I was showing the calculator on his computer. <laughs> so I don't have to have you switch. You, you and Paul have to switch seats. Yeah. Um, I'm getting me in trouble. We're just talking tonight. Now that we finally have the budget put together. That's is right. that we will just hit it at a macro level tonight of yeah. high level corrections that maybe that we want to see as a board to the budget. And then at the next one, yeah. once those are made, then we can look at the thousand uh, dollars here and two thousand yeah. dollars there type thing. So and there are some things that will make a big difference, right? Because out of some big things could make a difference of individuals that may want to come at the next meeting to voice their opinion if we decide to. Yeah not do something or you know yeah and the other thing is too once you too. decide on like a cola you know slash merit there's some things that are going to change the budget completely sure. so i have some stuff in there i can adjust but i needed you to answer some questions before i could do that so you want to just start the revenue page quick yes yeah. the big thing that i just wanted you to see only the real big change on the revenue is the fact that we have the proceeds of the sale of brts mm -hmm. the fifty four thousand five sixty. other than that there's nothing which to really I guess here. the way I look at that is two things. One, in the short term, it can help us with mm -hmm. some of our inflated costs that may happen here, you know, that we're seeing now and maybe for another year or two. But we also have to be careful that anything that anything we fill in there now, we are gonna have to or cannot be a ten year right. item. Exactly. So yeah. I mean if it's a literally if it's a three to five year fix, because that's the money that's coming in is only five years, yep. then that works. But if this is something that well, goes mm -hmm. out there, we're going to have to come up with two extra pennies on the tax rate at some point, right? Exactly. So that's the big one, obviously. Think about that when we look at that one. And you lost the admin reimbursement from solid waste, the Green Lantern lease. So some things, because we sold our interest to the transfer station, to Royalton, uh -huh. a couple of those things that you lost. And, but and not that this helps us, but... Um, we talked about the delinquent taxes, penalties, and interest pieces. And yep. I have reduced the delinquent taxes prior by 5000 a year. That was our agreement. But I have kept the penalty and interest because we still collect it. Yeah. So I mean, should we reduce the delinquent taxes more than or less than 25000 Because I mean, yeah. Probably. What does $25,000 represent as a percentage of what's over? Um, I actually can't tell you right and, now. And, but I'm, and I'm, I would ask that you project because mm -hmm. of your experience what yeah. this next year is going to have. Actually, I'd say we it's should, less than ten percent. We should get rid of that line entirely. We should not carry a delinquent tax bill because no. we did a tax sale last year. We'll do another tax sale this year. We're getting stuff, some money through you know the VHFA. There's a lot of loan programs out there. VRAP, VHAP, VWAP. 
Um, and the, I'm telling you, it's been a nightmare. This is where the state gets you. They tell you, they give out all this aid, but it's another unfunded mandate because our staff has to mm -hmm. make sure applications go in and where you get the money and help people apply. So frankly, it's, it's something that we should get rid of because now we take in all of our taxes as a receivable. So if it was me, we'd get rid of that line entirely, only keep interest and penalty. But um, the agreement we, I had with the board since I came was we just reduce it by 5,000 each year. So there wasn't a big hit to the budget. And eventually it I mean, just goes away. You, ideally, you should have zero. Like it shouldn't be anything. But And we are drilling down on that. We've yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we are. I mean, we had... Um, we had a tax sale last year and we'll have another tax sale this year. And then that will be our, every year we'll do a tax. We didn't do obviously during COVID because there was a lot of moving parts, um, so but we'll do another tax sale. In dropping it all together. Nothing. Well, well, it, it's, it's, it's delicate it. because it's, what, it's ha still, what happens is, is, it on your it is this, like. this is something that you're, you're assuming revenue for, for right now. Right. Yeah. So right now we have, you know, 35 yeah. we have fifty thousand dollars worth of delinquent taxes penalties and interest that we assume as revenue so if we just said this is zero going forward we're already in a two and a half cent hole so what we've been trying to do is because it was probably almost almost double that mm -hmm. about three or four years ago so we've been trying to ratchet that down mm -hmm. but Therese has been so efficient with collecting that money that she has she has collected that back taxes faster than we have been able to ratchet that down because we can't just go from one year saying we got fifty thousand in revenue to next year saying zero unless we're gonna make that up somewhere in the budget. Well, I mean you could right the question is do we you, like you sort of saying we were indicating yeah. five thousand a year, but do we look at maybe making that ten thousand this year? That's for this. Let me look at the delinquent tax list. Okay. And, and, I and you can see with you. like the um the penalties and interest, you can see like you know last year we collected you know eleven a little over eleven thousand dollars in penalties and seventeen in interest. So you can kind of see where you're budgeting on that. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're, we're ratcheting that down a little bit. Yeah. But on the delinquent taxes, that item is a little bit harder to figure out. Yeah. Um, um, because you're carrying that money. So, yeah. Um, and the thing too, to keep but, in mind, but is I think we should bring that down as low as possible. All right. I'll look at the list, but uh, the other thing to keep in mind is penalty is penalty every year because you have, there's people, no, there's people that's missed a payment by a day or two, this one payment right. and it's 8%. So that penalty hasn't really changed much, yeah. despite the fact that we've sold, you know, sold properties and done stuff at tax sale, but because people are delinquent, it's boom, 8%. So that's what happens. So I, I want well, to be clear. This is anticipated revenue. Revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're saying that because we've done so well, we really don't anticipate that revenue. Or potentially not as much of that. Or it's, right. or it's you know, right. we do try to write, we write some of it off when we do the audit in the sense that we know we have, possibly two properties that are uncollectible. So, but it, so that's something we carry on our delinquent tax list. We've tried to sell them at tax sale multiple times. No one bids on them. Mm -hmm. At some point it just becomes pointless and there'll be an issue where we'll end up, you know, going to court to force someone to clean up a property basically. Um, but I'll take a look at the delinquent tax list currently and see where we stand to see if it can drop further than 25. 000. And this doesn't help our, the direction that we no, want to go on lower net, but I was thinking of I, I, my notes anyways from looking through it was maybe cut it another 10,000, be down the, to 15. Okay. Where my question is coming from, does it, I, I'll base it does off it of hurt to keep it in the budget? Well, the only thing that yeah. does hurt is if you anticipate that as a revenue and it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. then it hurts you on the backside of your budget. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, in the last quarter of your budget, you now have make it up twenty thousand dollars that you get a fine in your budget or else yeah. you're gonna be off. Yeah. So so and, and taxes receivable are just an interesting yeah thing anyway. So I'll just look at the list and that's fine. I like I, I think whatever you. the realistic number is, if you come back okay. and say fifteen thousand, then maybe we just put fifteen thousand there. Sure. I'll look at um, the length of tax list. But that was really it, it for revenue. But now we gotta find an extra half a penny. <laughs> <laughs> now we're that's already fine. more a half a penny. <laughs> that's okay.
but also in that in that same area, the BRTS, is there some way to separate that out from the general fund revenue? Um so that we don't get ourselves into the we committed now this money is not coming in issue? Not really at this point, because I think that when we accepted I don't know where else you could put it because I don't think that you could put it into a capital fund because it's not a capital issue. I think it has to stay in the general fund. We just have to yeah. be knowledgeable about aware when we're budgeting as to what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, the only other option I suppose you have is you could make a, if you don't want it to fund anything in your general fund, you could put it in as a general fund revenue and take it out as an expense and move it to a capital fund yep. immediately. That way it's in out and it, it's not offsetting anything right. else. Like right now it'll offset, you know, the 21 and a half percent, you know, insurance yeah. rate. Then it's in a capital fund. Yeah. And it has to get used yeah. for whatever that yeah, purpose exactly. is. So I feel like it's almost more advantageous to leave it as the general fund, but as a, as a note, whether it's this board, whether it's Teresa's so, manager so five years from now, that that's very understood because the only we all know there's a lot of turnover. Right. And that it may not be any of us sitting here five years from just now. the danger of that is you can't use it beyond five years right mm -hmm. right so i mean it's it's a short yeah. it should be a short-term fix or or it not a short-term fix and you could do what gene's saying and mm -hmm. you could if, if if you're recognizing fifty four thousand a year we could allocate fifty four thousand dollars a year to like the garage, whatever a capital fund capital or whatever market. and you could put it in there yeah. because or to and a then, program that is well, a, a, right. a short, a, a limited program. Right. Or something we expect to do for no more than five yeah. years. In this case, with this budget, we're in such a, you know, 21 half percent increase in health insurance premiums uh, that we didn't ask for. We've got an increase in retirement. oil, a slight, I mean, I only budget a slight increase for retirement because we don't know yet what yeah. they're going to do. We have an increase. I mean, salt, salt went from 88. We settled at 88 and they are already at like 105 because they said we didn't submit our paperwork. I said, yes, I did. And I proved it to them and they had to stay with the 88, but they, so I'm sure the minute we spend the quantity of salt, we requested yeah, that we're going up to 105. So, I mean, I wonder if this year isn't a good year to keep the 50 in to just help us so maybe the budget kind of levels out next year we see what inflation does and well, diesel prices and because this is a i don't know my crystal ball is a little rusty <laughs> about pricing and and stuff so anyways that's the big deal for um revenues which really wasn't much just a reminder to you that that was five years so this is the second year of five years and we can tackle that issue later so the first page of the budget is obviously public works this is some big stuff this is Obviously, um, you know, as I just, I use salt as an example, um, and I budgeted 10% increase over the 105. Mm. Um, so there's some other stuff we want to move towards um, away from organic material for sand and get, you know, manufactured sand. But one of the things we need to talk about is wages, because as I reported, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, whatever, a couple meetings ago, looked like the social security um, increase was going to be about 8%. It looked like the federal government maybe was at 4.76% that they maybe that the Biden administration was recommending. So hard to know what the actual, you know, COLA is right now. And we also with public works are running into a couple issues where, um, certainly Woodstock, Palm for it just went to $30 an hour. If you have a CDL, um, Obviously, we do not have the grand list of Pomper and Woodstock. So there's some of that. I mean, I do feel like our current wages are, you know, in the running, but yet we also don't have applicants. You know, people with a CDL are hard to come by and, you know, going to go places and talk more about that later. yeah, and make money. But I'm just saying what that will change my whole budget because I have used 8% across the board. So if we settle on four, six, whatever, that's immediately going to change the entire budget because that will change FICA, Medi, um, retirement. So everything changes once I know what you want me to base the budget on. That's something I do want to know tonight. Um, well, I know 
this might not be that's what fine. you like to hear but no it's fine um i don't i mean i i just i looked at the budget as a whole and then i started yeah. saying what do we really need mm -hmm. where can we make some cuts to get yeah. to what i would presume to be more reasonable right um just giving the circumstances we have so and i and i don't know exactly what this would be but if we right now you have it budgeted for four full-time and one seasonal for public works yep and if we went back to the three full time and two seasonals, how much? I roughly came up with about seventy five thousand that we would save. Does that sound about right? I'd have to between computer. I don't know. I'll have to look wages and and benefits, benefits and stuff. I mean, I know it's not ideally what we. No, I, I know. know. I know. No. Well, is, it, is that practical? We have two seasonals. I mean, you know, so well, like Randolph only has three people. Yeah. We we have two. That's all they have right I mean, now. I, I think it's you know. Three. We're gonna have three seasonals. Three seasonals, Lord willing, this right now, and um, but I mean, currently we have two full time. So three full time would is where we were before. So when I had right. at one point, I did have three full time, mm -hmm. and I had a seasonal. So, and then I still had, remember at the time that I had the seasonal, I also had the person, it was Morgan. And then it was Richard who did the part parks, part yeah. public work. So that was still a full-time position. So that, is that part of this or is that in the parks and rec? That's going to be, that actually is in parks and rec, because if you could see that what I had, what we did here is, is if we change this, um, so that was one of the conversation pieces is what are we going to do? So if we go to three full-time and two seasonals, or we go to three full-time and then we hire one full-time person that does mowing parks, water, sewer mm. maintenance, and does that in the winter, you know, works for the public works in the winter time. So we have that. I mean, I kind of looked at it as one, well, <laughs> one, we're, we're trying to budget for four full-time and one seasonal. Mm-hmm. We only have two full time now, so yeah. I, I mean, what what is the chances of hiring two more full time individuals between now and then, anyways? Right? I mean, yeah. so that was the first part. And yeah, thinking back to, you know, I I was just doing some work in Randolph, and they have three full time workers right now, and you know, well, no, they got more than that because they get two garages. They might so, have three in Randolph, but they've got. So more I'm just, you know, like, so I'm just starting to think, like, well, we had three before. And, yeah, you know, we may not even get four, so. And, it's true. and if we got to make a cut somewhere, why don't we? Yeah. And, I mean, and you'd be right because two singles and two families are what I budgeted. And I budgeted. Um, I because I, I was just you. roughly thinking that you're going to save, you'll save okay. about 50,000 in wage and then another 25,000 in um, Benny's. Yeah, Benny's. Because, so it's like roughly 75,000. Yeah. Because so I'm looking at. Um, I mean, it's not like we're cut, talking cut in a position. It's a position. We, we didn't have. We, we don't have, we don't have I know for nobody it. for her, but yeah, no, because I'm looking at 23. Oh, so yeah, I'm looking, I budgeted about 24,000 for two families. So you're right. There's 22,000 right off the top. So, so I want to offer a different, a different perspective than we've, you know, you look at the budget as a whole and then see where we can come. Now, I want to look at what do we need? What do we need to do the job and to do it right? And then if it's too much, what are we not going to do? Mm -hmm. That's a different question than how do we just, how many staff do we have or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but what do we, what do we, the least amount of dollars that we really need to do the job? Well, the, and we we add that all up, and it's going to come up to too much. So then the question <laughs> is, what is it we don't do? Not where do we do we cut staff, or but is do we do less with public to, work well, to keep do the we, to keep the level of service that we have set for the community at the public works? We need to have four people doing work at all times. Now that could be a mixture of full time and part time. So, so, so then, then that's if we keep it the way it is, like doing sidewalk cleaning and all that stuff. I mean, we could go and say everybody's got to clean their own sidewalks, and we could save a part-time position right yeah. there. But, but to the level, if you do the level of service that we have right now, you need the three full-time, 
and then you need a part-time person in the winter and a part-time person in the summer to do yeah because we have miscellaneous so, stuff so then my argument is that we budget for that mm -hmm. and then at the end we decide well no we're not going to do sidewalks because we can't afford that extra person right so I mean, that, that's, that's a different budget argument is. to take to the town right so this budget is you know obviously i meet with all the department heads and this is what what they have come up with these are their budgets and either we've talked about them or we haven't uh you know depending on or we've talked in certain sections of them, but i went through this whole budget with the road crew and uh so this is just so this is their request um, this is what they would like. They would like four full-time people and one seasonal. Um, and as I said, I budgeted. Yeah, today. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. And um, so that's where we are with that. Some of this stuff, obviously, uh, Social Security, Medicare, retirement, all that is bank, workers' comp, and unemployment is all banked on wages. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and then they made some other changes in here. So I don't know what you want to talk about here. Do you want to just talk about public works? Did you, I don't want well, to. Well, I, I think the biggest the glaring thing is that, you know, public works budgets up 110,000. Yeah, no doubt. Year. So, yeah. you know. And you're, saying, you're saying we need four FPEs and not four and a half. There's four, five. Well, but we he's just, saying three and the department's ideal is. Yeah. That's, we get to come in and say a final yay or nay. And I think Chris's point is sort of a, a good one to explore of what does it look like, whether that's two full-time and X number of seasonal or three full-time and X number of seasonal, what are those differences? So we have something to compare because the reality of even by 2024, we may not fill four full-time positions. May not. Right. And so, right. I mean, we, we've struggled at keeping two to three, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's true. And I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I just, well, one, I don't even think we'd get a fourth full-time mm -hmm. person if we wanted them, unless you were going to increase wages and stuff So like I can that. change the budget. Um, I can make another column for three full-time and two seasonal. So we can, let's take but just a to see, see what, what that, that looks what like. What that may look like. If you look at the next section down, you've got, you know, uh, repairs. Well, before we go to the next section there, the overtime. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it shows last year we were 13,000 over. Yeah. Should we put some more in? Well, one thing has changed is that the um, road foreman is no longer getting overtime. The road foreman is on salary. So that should help us. That will help. Yep. Um, that makes some changes that was calculated into his salary. So it's also hard to tell in the year you get. Um, well, we had, you know, we just, I mean, last year we came through one of the rougher winters that we've had in a while. No, it doesn't necessarily mean precipitation, but it means yep. all the, all the pieces, the ice, the snow, I mean, the rain, the... We yeah, had kind of a rough, a rough than winter. Than and um, we actually came in under budget on public works personnel. We budgeted 405 and came in at 373 because we also knew we had some savings in health insurance because... So at one point, I did allow for some overtime that because I knew I had a savings in... Um, but wasn't there basically the like a half a position that we never filled last yeah. year? Yeah. So we had yeah, that we had buffer. Some, yeah, we had of a uh, half a position we never filled. Yeah. Um so um so I guess too before we go over is what is the cola? I mean that's going to change the entire budget and knock I just need to know what to budget here. We have done 3 in the past. Um the uh, as I just said the you know we know I always look at social security um keeping in mind that social security may go up but they're also probably getting hammered on their insurance premium. So, um, well, insurance premiums are up, prescription. Exactly. Are up, That's uh, what I'm saying. Copays and deductibles are up. Yeah. I haven't heard about Medicare yet, what they're going to do. In theory, it's supposed to be zero increase or maybe a, a decrease. Mm -hmm. But um, there's been no announcement on that yet. It, it's crazy. I mean, in the back of your mind, or it's up in the front of my mind, is that the, it, the guy who's getting Social Security might get that eight point seven, mm -hmm. but they're making fifteen thousand dollars a year. Exactly. I agree. Now you put eight point eight point seven on a guy who's making forty thousand dollars a year, that gets a shitload more expensive. Yeah, and that's why I hate percentages. And we also have to calculate the <clears throat> the fact that you know that affects your OT rate and stuff. So, and as I have said, you know, and everybody knows it, just because it's budgeted doesn't mean that's what's getting handed out. Mm -hmm. So. As I said, last time I looked in the article I read, it said that, you know, the feds were looking at, you know, four point whatever. I have no idea what the state's doing. Um, 
So I'm happy to drop the obviously change this percentage. I just need you to tell me what you want me to. I would like to make a few phone calls around some of the employers around here. Who who are we competing with for employees? Well, you're competing with the state of Vermont. Anybody in the construction trade industry. Yeah, with pike, whether, you're, pike industry. whether you're competing with Pike, whether you're competing with the state of Vermont. Um, the state of Vermont last year gave all their CDL employees a $4 an hour raise. So, wow. But I've looked at their, but I looked at their, um, I got a hold of their chart. I looked at the one guy that I had that seemed to fit the criteria and we were in the money. And recently, as I've said, the state, but the, state the, list was, serve, the list serve came, they were behind the state them. was behind. The they were behind the eight ball. Stuff anyway. And the list serve came out. Don't forget there was two years. It's a state. Re, one year they retracted yep. these people's pay. Mm -hmm. One year they gave them nothing. Yeah, exactly. And we were still giving three and 4% those years. Yeah, I'm sure you were. So, I mean, it, it goes deeper than what happened last year. No, I agree. And I'm, like I said, when, and I think, I, and I know I told you guys this, but I'll tell you again, when recently through the state listserv, there was a question put out there saying, hey, um, who has positions open and what are your wages? Mm -hmm. It would have been easier to say who doesn't have positions open, but right. I read every single one of those to see where we were. We were in the money. I did a salary survey last year or a year and a half ago, and we're right where we need to be. But what we're competing for are um, people with a CDL that have the opportunity, they can haul from Burlington to Boston at night and they're going to make a ton of money. We can't ever touch those people, um, people that are going to Pike, people that maybe need the mandatory or not mandatory, but a Over lot of OT. Or... I can't get, I won't give anybody, we don't do OT in the summer unless we have to. And then you have people that are, you know, plowing snow all winter is, is tough, you know? And so I think we're competing with the state and other People and right now we're competing with everybody. If you look on Indeed, the biggest thing, if you have a CDL, you're good to go. So we have talked about, I've talked to AJ and Morgan about contracting more out. That's why we had gone to three people before was hire three people and contract more work out because, and I- The when, is just kill you. Yeah, they do. And when we lost, you know, when Hazen went, went um, when Hazen left, I calculated how much we were paying per week and Benny's and everything and said to the guys, we can contract out this much per week in work. So if we have something else to have somebody do, let's do it. And um, so it may be that. It may be that we are with three and that we contract work out, which is what we've done in the past. And we may just have to do some more of that. We also thought about doing a little more creative and saying, okay, um, instead of just giving somebody, you know, like a section of road and having them just do the grading and this and that, maybe they do the plowing, you know, maybe we... Because if this is our future, we need to figure out, you know, if we're going to enter some contracts with people. One that comes to mind is there's 75 trucks that go through town every day that are lawnmowers. Mm -hmm. That's why they're making their living. Yeah. Grass don't grow for shit in the winter. Mm -hmm. Maybe they would clean sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we did have somebody that worked for the town just to do sidewalks, and that may be something that we we do, but... Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, if you want me to, to figure this at 4%, 5%, whatever, I mean, that's you, fine. I just need them. The, the challenge is, <laughs> like I'll, I'll say in the private market anyways. It's tough. <laughs> this year, we gave our employees a combination of 7% raise. Um, now, we're private, so um, our employees pay in a portion of their health insurance, which is yeah. roughly about 20% they pay in, and the company does 80 but that was, and I, I've heard other companies given much more mm -hmm. uh, um, or, you know, truck drivers that used to hire for 22, 23 bucks an hour were 30 bucks an hour, you know? So um, I do say that public works may be different than the rest yeah. of the budget, that public works, we may have to budget. We may not get somebody for what we used to get people for. So we may have to, maybe that section of the budget, we keep the 8% just for play you know, in the case that I have to bring somebody in, then you bump the rails and then maybe well, other stuff. Well, yeah, and I'm not a fan and of that. See, nobody gets a cola in Bethel. We don't. You get a what I consider a merit raise. That's what everybody gets. Because if you lasted another year, congratulations. Your bennies went up, your retirement went up. What have you done? So if you have worked for the town of Bethel and, you know, or employee and you've been doing some stuff and extras and this and that, then... To me, there's an increase involved. If you just hung on, 
then you already got a 21 and a half percent interest or increase in your health insurance, Benny, plus you've got an increase in your retirement. So Bethel is never, I mean, perhaps they were in the past. I don't do colas. I figure it's pretty much it, all just merit. I was looking through the numbers and if you, you know, granted our people get paid. Well, when I say our people, town yeah. versus private get paid a little less on the wage side, but there's a little more of the benefits that are picked yeah. up. And if you look okay. at the trade-off, let's say in this case, where employers were given seven or 10% raise bonuses, but I was looking at, I think you still could do the 3%. Yeah. And that keeps you in that middle ground with everybody else when when you're talking about municipality markets. So you just look at the, I mean, you're not going to compete with the private guys. I mean, it's, right. it's, you it's, someone wants to go private. Gonna you're, never, private. Yes. you're never going to say private is $54,000. Say that again? The what? $54,000 for retirement for four, for four guys. Uh-huh. I know. That's why I said it, it was basic. That does yeah. not happen in, in private. Well, Absolutely because not. just remember. No, because you can go cross state boundaries. So like my company's out of Georgia. So they deal with Georgia stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, you have a, an open market, let's say to, to pick yeah. for your health insurance where, you know, if you're, no, he's talking about retirement. So no, no, but I'm saying like here, whatever the state tells you is what you get a budget for. So let's talk about retirement for a second. So because Bethel chose visas a long time ago, that's what you're with. We can't remove ourselves from visas or do anything else. Um, I've asked if we could go to Veemers. I asked when I got here, they said no. So um, we're currently at 19.5% and I increased it to 20.08 just because I don't know what the state's going to do. But you're right. And that's based on salaries. The employee has to put in based on their salary, either 6.75 or 7.12%, depending if you, what they changed was if you make over a certain amount, um, then you have to, we have to uh, contribute more. And if you make under, then you're at the 6.65. If you're over, I think we're at, I think it's 7.12 or something. So, but you're right. It's all based on salary. So if I go to this 3%, then that's, that's going to change this whole equation. And I understand it was a problem with our, with the employee we lost this summer, but I'm a big proponent of total compensation. And if you talk up to somebody, walk up to somebody who's making $24 an hour, and you start adding on these I things. One hundred percent. Soon they're making forty-five dollars an hour. It's true, and and you and, and I. And I don't understand why we don't have everybody in Royalton working for us because their insurance sucks. They don't. What happens is you you get obviously we're all old enough to have figured done the math and figured it out, but there are people who it doesn't buy them bread. So if you have a young person with a young family, uh, you know, some they make those. But we do talk about this. I mean, are you kidding? I've, you know track well, down I mean, a you couple just look people at and talk to them about the bennies trying to get them to even apply here mm -hmm. and went through the whole thing and just said you know i i can do better you know this i can do better than what you're making right there look at the bennies look at this look at that but you know i mean roughly i mean do what people how much is one percent dollars how many dollars is one percent i mean what, how much are we talking about here i mean as far as a raise no, instead, if we go what's our three, labor cost? what's you know from three to five, we're talking five or three it or seven. Everybody's individual salary. So no, if but we still have a total percent. You know, I I have to do it individually for every single person. So I have a spreadsheet on salaries. It calculates current salary times one percent. So you know, you know, we have a someplace. This is what we're paying for labor. Do you know what our like within the budget? Like, well, huh? right as a here. whole, what our weekly. Or my weekly payroll looks like this, this is a number we're about twenty six thousand dollars. So roughly, you know, just not to say that everybody gets paid the same, you know, yeah. but roughly, you know, three percent would be like fifteen hundred dollar raise over the course of the season. Yeah, because it's yeah, so it's about five hundred dollars a percent. Yeah, our bi weekly payroll that we take out of the checkbook is about twenty six to twenty four thousand currently, and we're not doing any overtime right now. That was your question, Lindley. Yeah. So anywho, that's fine. Let's do 3% and see what it looks like or and go from there. Um, I did have one other question I need you to answer, which was brought up by Dave Eddy. So David made a good point when we were talking about um, hiring people and stuff. So we currently do a payment in lieu of insurance. We talked about this when we did my contract. Currently, the payment in lieu of health insurance is only $3,000. When we are going to pay 12000 
for a single plan. So Dave had a good idea, which was to say, okay, maybe you have someone who is married and can get their insurance somewhere from a spouse. 3000 is not a real big uh, incentive for them not to take our health insurance. Whereas if you say $10,000, you're going to get a payment in lieu of health insurance for $10,000. Now there's an incentive. Now it's not based, it's not, you don't calculate OT on it. It's just a flat stipend biweekly. So it doesn't change your, um, you know, overtime rate. So that is something to, you know, think about. Now we can, for us, and we've done that before, you can kind of say, okay, I'm going to be under on payroll or under on health insurance, but we have currently one employee who takes advantage of that. So if you want to go to a $10,000 a year payment in lieu of, or something thereof, that's fine. I just, I also need to know that because that also is going to affect this budget. Well, with their town office, with the employees that we have, and granted, we don't have a lot of employees. So yeah. Out of the employees that we do have, how many of those employees have the option to take insurance somewhere else? Um, currently, before we even talk dollars, well, okay. I mean, if so we I have. have 10 employees and only two of them have an option is, you know, at that point, doesn't make sense for us to talk about this. I have one. We need some new employees. Exactly. Dave's talking about oh, right. recruitment. So I'm thinking Except recruitment. One. I can think of one currently because we have so currently it would affect, it would affect roughly one, one, maybe two people that we have now that could, one person could take advantage of that. But like Dave was saying, it's recruitment. It could be an advertisement tool, right? Mm-hmm for somebody that's coming in. Yeah. And you're um, still going to save money. Even at 10 grand, you're still saving. I mean, really money. anything under $12,000, you save money, right? Exactly. So, so the condition would be that they can retrieve health insurance from somebody else. You, yeah. would, you would offer health insurance. Another source. Yeah. Say you're married and you're, you could get health insurance no. from your wife. Yeah. They may say, great, I'll take it from my wife. I think, the condition, I think the condition is that they just choose whether to take it or not. Right, but if, no, because if they have another option, they can do, do that. They if they have don't, to... they're forced to. The state requires it. Yes. So if yep. your employer offers it and you have no other option, you have, have to, to take, take it. it. Or be penalized. Yeah. Yep. Or be and, penalized. And it's, they don't have to take it. You. And we but get it's penalized. a pretty significant penalty. You get the Obama though. Penalty. So it's yeah. sort of a, like your, your hands and are the, tied. And the employer, we get penalized. We have to pay a monthly or a yeah. quarterly fee on. So. So but, there, there's another thing that some employers are doing, and that is saying, if Julie were employed and she gets family health, but she has to pay the family side of it. Yes. That's that that does not it covers me, mm-hmm. but it covers me out of her yeah. pocket. Exactly, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, insured at the school. Mm-hmm. She got coverage. I got coverage too, but we don't okay. pay for yeah. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and in Bethel, like a lot of municipalities, this has been the way it has been for a long time. It doesn't mean it can't change. My recommendation is always, if you are going to change something like that, because let's face it, you're trying to make an inequitable system equitable, which will never happen. I've had this conversation for 15 years, and um, but what you could, if you're going to do that, then you should change it for new hires. You you know, in this market, we cannot take yeah. away benefits from employees. I mean, we'll be, you know, so, be two people left yeah. working for the town. So, and but it is something can, you can think about. And we're going to be, I'm working currently on the new draft of the personnel policy. So it'll be a conversation to have at that point, I think. Um, yeah, nationally, we build our health, ins- our health system around employer-based yeah. insurance. And... It's a sticky wicket. It is. It seems to me that so crazy. Are we dumb question? Are we locked into our current health carrier, health insurance carrier? No. Um, we can. I haven't. To the, the I once haven't, a year. I haven't commitment. signed the paperwork yet. Um, we, you know, we have done this for a couple of years. We kind of went back and forth, one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. Well, we went to MVP. What? Four years ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we went from Blue Cross Blue Shield to MVP. They both got a significant increase um, <laughs> because the state is one of the things Chris was talking to Kurt about. I have MVPs. I don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield. We can yeah. look. Sometimes the, it, 
it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, I even yeah. looked, but I can look at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, we, so remember, we at, came over to MVP. Right. Yeah. Shouldn't for, he help be doing this for the, like all municipalities so you can get the bigger group? They yeah. don't anymore. No. And you also, before when they kind of looked at where you could go, whatever, they actually charged us a fee, which to me was, so I thought, I'm like, no, we can, we can look at the chart just as well as anybody else and uh, to figure it out. So we have flip-flopped back and forth before. Um, you go to a company with 10 people or you go to a company with 10,000. Yeah. The rates are a lot. Yeah. Better. They're not a yeah. broker. Our so, rates, I mean, they're not a broker anymore. So, and of course, too, there were state law changes and Obamacare and all that. But I can look at Blue Cross Blue Shield. I mean, we have sixty thousand employees at my work, and over the, over forty eight states, and they, um, um, I pay for a full family two hundred and seventy five dollars a month. Yeah, but that's not what the cost is. But what I'm saying is that's the. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I pay twenty percent, which we were just talking is. Right now, I think Tree said she budgets like twenty, let's say twenty four thousand dollars a person, right? right? And that's and that's like so that's cheap. If you're paying two seven, that's that's like twelve thousand dollars, and we're paying yeah. twenty five. What I'm saying is like at my at my he only pays instance, a portion because it shows it every year because uh, they give us a um, uh, total compensation um, yeah. thing, and and so our company pays about seventeen thousand dollars a year for for my package. So he's where yeah. where they where you pay seven thousand dollars more for that same package, right? Because but he can where shop we shop on the open market, yeah, and we can. and you're stuck with whatever's in Vermont. Very true, and, and that's the yeah. So I so are we comfortable? What an option is a family a medical leave plan or a family medical savings account? We don't rather I, I, I'm saying for those who have other insurance instead of doing a cash in lieu of because they don't need that benefit they've got it the question is can we do a medical savings plan that picks up costs that their other insurance is not picking up I don't know um, I will say, because I know that someone who currently does it, that they're, you know, they have a lot more out of pocket. Um, I don't know. I don't know how we would manage that. And um, <clears throat> I think as Dave's point is, it's really, <clears throat> people want the 10,000. They want the cash. Well, they don't, <clears throat> they don't want the cash. And what they use it for is up to them. They may be using it to pay co-pays and deductibles and whatever, but I'm not sure I don't even know if we could do that because they're not on our plan. So I don't know how our company, our insurance company that we contract with would even manage an HRA or HSA for a non enrolled employee. And we don't have, we can't do it. Well, again, we can, we can do a little more research on it well, because we don't need it for budget. No, I just want to know about the 10,000 if we're comfortable. Back to Paul's question of what would a 1% increase be? And I know, I know that this is a very loose number and it does not include the increase to retirement, the increase to overtime, the increase on workers' comp and all of those auxiliary pieces, but just, just based on the 26,000 a pay period, it's about 6,700 a year for all of the employees to go up 1%. It's about 20,000 plus a little um, for a 3%. If that helped, just to give you that metric, um, you know, and it's not, it's not perfect because it's missing. Yeah. It's a big, that's right. why I no, a big I, difference. I appreciate that you asked that because that to, yeah. to put it into a percent breakdown of what's 1% versus 3% versus yeah. 5% was actually really helpful for me to do the math. Yeah. Just remember when you start giving out percentages, that is, that is a, um, and word it's always there yeah exactly so, so that's why i like the 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 it paid in lieu that's a one-shot deal yeah it's, it doesn't affect their salary they don't get more salary exactly where if you give a three percent and then a three percent a three percent pretty soon oh that raise well is well i think we're talking about different like what it was two well, different well no i i get what dave's talking about too is and i believe royalton does it right now where they don't give out percent raises they give out oh. they put their board puts aside a certain amount of money every year 
they'll make it up. They put aside $30,000 that they will pay out to their employees for merit and we'll call it merit awards. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to use bonus, but yeah. So they don't actually say that you're, you've now increased a dollar an hour. What they're saying is you did such a good job. Here's $4,000 or whatever. Yeah. Um, However, they ran into some kind of issue this past year with that, that. and I can't remember it's it. Federal no. laws have changed. Yeah, you have to be careful of that. On they do they changed all the federal uh, laws about? So they got they got in trouble over there. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. The other thing too is you take a look at, you know, when I do it, I know what everybody's hourly rate is, and you obviously look at you know seniority and who's where and what if you bring a new guy. You know, so you mm. it's not like everybody you don't get them a flat. You know, sometimes you have to look at the if you budget a three percent for say the road crew then you have, I have a dollar amount. And so I sometimes have to change that around. So maybe this one gets more, this one gets less and you kind of look at the whole picture. And again, it's, you know, the fact that you hung on another year is great, but it doesn't entitle you to more money per hour. So is everybody good with the 10,000 in payment in lieu just because that's gonna affect my, one of my budgets in here? You're not, okay. You don't want to go from three to 10. Okay. I just don't believe in them, but that's. Okay. So I wouldn't raise it. All right. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to leave it in just for, <clears throat> we can discuss it when we get into the fine tuning. I mean, I, I guess can, I, <laughs> I'm one voice. I'm one voice. Well, I know you're but just I, five. I just, you know, we offer the benefit and the person decides to take it or not. Right. I think Dave's point is it's just more of a recruitment tool because if we are losing people at times because of money and I can't, you know, give them 60 hours a week of overtime year round, I can't. I mean, three might be light, but 10 might be a little steep, at least on a jump basis. Yeah. Uh, that's you know, why I say, is there more of a contract? I, I've expressed myself and been heard. So that's <laughs> how do you budget? How do you put that in the budget? Do you anticipate? How many employees you might hire and have to put that money? It's an, yeah. it'd be an offset. If they take it, it's budgeted for as the expense to the town. And if they it's don't take insurance. it, it's an expense to the employee. It's just mm -hmm. who's it would it. only help us in this case for the most part would be if we budget for another full time person mm -hmm. and we budgeted full bennies for us. That's what I do. And a person came on and they took the in lieu payment instead. Mm -hmm. We would come out ahead. On whatever that difference would be on the benefit, mm -hmm. end of and if they took the single, however, if somebody you're not anticipating necessarily hiring, right? No, you're not thinking. Well, maybe we'll hire. Them. No, right. what I put in the budget under health insurance, whatever is there is there. Yeah, I budget for. Yeah. Okay. If I have, I know what I currently have. So if I currently have two singles and I'm going to do two hires, I budget two family plans. Right. That way, you don't want to get caught. Right. Right. You right. hire yeah. someone who's a single because you people, might be liable. They might, might end up with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, okay. so I mean, I, I, I get. I you have a single, then they get married. Boom! I just got a health insurance. I just got a family plan. So I, you know, you try. I mean, I don't have. Odds. <laughs> I haven't studied the numbers enough to see what would be. I mean, obviously, you want the number to be high enough like that it's enticing to want to do it. But I think ten. I don't. Seven. I want to see how ten hits the budget okay. as opposed to. Oh, ten's five, in here now. Or, you know. Um, I think we, just, yeah. Just it only affects one person. Point. When I was negotiating with the school and stuff, dollars are not the best human motivator. There are a lot of other things that are better. I'm not going to say that we have Tom that. Time. <laughs> but Chris's favorite. Yeah. yeah. There's been national studies that you can give a guy $20 an hour every year, and 10 years later, he's still doing the same job he was when he was getting 20. Now he's getting 70. He's not doing anything more for you. No, I agree. But well, that's because it's union. Support. Other motivators are <laughs> there's no motivation there, so. the union. All right. So what do you want to talk about? Town owned equipment. <laughs> so okay. So the the repairs parts and what we'll call tires, chains, and yeah. cutting edges. So I actually said this to the guy. This has been spiraling higher and higher and higher every year. And and true we i think uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i think as a board we anticipated some of this to continue to go up a little bit mm -hmm. while we figured out 
our equipment issues. And exactly. We, and we've been working through this. Yeah. And I would think at this point we should be seeing some efficiencies from this, not, not be asking for another 20 plus thousand. Mm -hmm. um, well, <clears throat> I talked to AJ and I mean, Morgan. so this that's great. If they want the tires and chains and cutting edges for 20,000, then I think we need to take 20,000 out of the tire, uh, the, uh, the other the item. Chains then. used to come out of the repair. Yeah, it was all, yeah. yeah. But don't forget that one year, excuse me, Alan came to you guys for capital money for tires. So I do know that Morgan and AJ have a different take than a prior road format about how tires work. So when they're buying and this and that. What's happening right now is while we have a plan from the equipment committee, we have a plan on how to do equipment. We are still, we have an international that is having issues and it was last winter and we have already replaced three computers in that thing. Put a call out on the Vermont, you know, entire state of Vermont uh, feed to find out if anyone had problems with this brand of international because we're still trying to keep it on the road and we have had issues with it. The, uh, you know, the greater, the equipment committee dumped about $10,000 into it a couple of years ago because they felt like some stuff on the market was mm -hmm. junk and they wanted to keep it. But we're having, you know, we've had some issues with the loader. Remember we had to put in a, a completely unexpected transmission to the tune of $13,000. So we are not where we need to be at equipment yet. Um, that being said, yes, when Morgan and AJ gave well, I'm this, just looking I at them, I said, guys, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> that's the right number. Do we, I do we, would we have to go back and, say, and look at tires. We spend on tires. Yeah, I could look back. Well, that um, repairs parts and everything. That I see, you know, on the payables all the time. It's true. That is kind of a, I don't want to say dumping ground, but it's kind mm -hmm. of a, a catch all place. Yeah, that has tools. Yeah, it has well, it has all, everything. Yeah. You know that with all the miscellaneous yeah, stuff. Yeah, the tool budget, but now, which they didn't. Yeah, they do now. But, but I yeah. mean, just just right. four four to five years ago, we were at fifty thousand dollars for everything. Yeah. Now I think hey, but we you can were all spending agree that, 75. that that probably wasn't a right number at that time. Right, because you were spending but, seventy five. But with this budget right now, we'd be looking at ninety. Yeah, you know, and I. All right, I'll put a question marks here and we'll I'll speak to them and I can look at the history of chains and say, tires. Say the board has approved your line item of tires, chains, and cutting edges, and they have directed you to find twenty thousand dollars worth of cuts on your repairs and parts. Yeah. On, right? I mean it, I, I don't That's, you know there's also staff like it's fine, they knew that. You know, there's repair exactly, you know, they blow out a radiator hose and have to go over the that's an answer or whoever right. you know, get it fixed. There's all sorts of minor things that go into the police. Exactly, because they don't, they, yeah, they certainly don't fix everything. Yeah, the that other one changes just, just, are uh, that's higher and higher. gas, oil, grease, and diesel. So when you say, I just want to make sure I got this right, when you say oil, that's heating oil? No. That's just like oil for oil changes and yep. grease and lube and stuff. Yep. So I, looking at the research, anyways, last year, Mm -hmm. at this time versus this year the it, now i know we had budgeted 8800 and ended up at 13 something mm -hmm. do you know i'd have to look was that 13 really a true overrun on let me look increased costs or was it like you got a shipment of gas or you got some stuff that receded right before the yeah. budget or something because if we're just talking about the budget of last year of nine thousand dollars, if we if we went with the true increase right now, that would probably put us more like twelve, not fifteen. Now I know it's only three thousand dollar difference, but um, now now on diesel cost of all through the roof. Um, yes and no. I mean, it, like the only one that's really staying high right now is diesel and 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 some heating oil. Um, like gas is within striking distance of each other as it was last year at this time. High threes. Well, I don't, I don't know about threes or anything. So yeah, a lot of that stuff really hasn't. Somebody else. And then you got to think of like the quantity that you use versus you know, like I I agree with the the diesel fuel 
you know, if 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 it continues to stay at six dollars for diesel fuel, then then you know that seventy thousand is you know unfortunately the right number. Um, but I just thought the fifteen was a little high. Maybe just look at that. And yeah, because we have I can look ten seven zero five and. Plow every three snowflakes. That's true. Well, I think uh, I think that's I think sometimes it, I, did. I see the plow going through and I don't see anything coming out the end of it. So this is I'm looking at here Texas refinery that was two thousand one twenty two Texas refinery one two six five CV oil um, looks like um, I'm looking at CV oil CV oil CV oil under gas oil and grease. <clears throat> obviously we may you know we we pay for the oil for and get reimbursed for um constant yeah. but yeah you can see these are all cv oil texas refinery mm -hmm. which is Three. grease mm -hmm. um somebody from preventative maintenance preventative maintenance i don't know if that's deaf um texas refinery here's some but like for oil. instance here you had an invoice that came in at seven fifteen. Mm -hmm, because for a thousand dollars you know what i mean that yeah it was for the prior year you know leaped over June. that it was budget June. season and here you'd pay not yeah so some of that yeah. so that might have knocked a thousand might have put you down to you know 12 grand but so yeah so that but anyways i will look at the um so yeah as far as diesel i don't know what's what was your take on diesel you think 70 That's, is I don't know. if you kind of take the 70 is Probably pretty close. No, as a budget number, I wouldn't go down. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, roadside mowing, you know, we did have some complaints because, uh, you know, I obviously haven't been able to, we haven't afforded to, <laughs> to do all the roads. So um, I did, this is an increase I don't know is rate yet, but this is a number I put in from 14 to 17 because I'm just yeah. trying, we have all this road mileage and I'm trying to do more. Um, that, that's that's the question I was asking earlier. What do you not do? You don't do all the roads. <laughs> and I, for I mean, seventeen thousand, I'm not going to get all yeah, the roads. Well, the nice, I mean, that's that's the the nice thing with some of those items like roadside mowing, um, ditching, gravel and stuff is depending on what your winter looks like, right? If you come out of your winter really heavy on your cost, you could always say, "Well, we're going to cut back and only ditch." Mm -hmm. Well, half or yeah, I'm just saying you know, that's an example. Gives us a little buffer there. That different kind of budgeting. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be. I think we need to maybe. Oh, I hate to use the word lean, but lean on our road foreman to, like the roadside mowing. That personal it was a personal thing for me when I drove my truck down a class three road, and both sides of it are being scratched. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been mowed for three years. So what I'm saying is, okay, yep. we mowed it. Next year, it doesn't get mowed. It doesn't, yeah. need, it doesn't need to be mowed. Now. And I did do and, a... And that's what I'm saying yeah. is there's roads out there that get mowed every year. Exactly. That maybe they don't need it. And that's what we did last year. I finally created a spreadsheet for the road warming of all the roads and then made a note on what we'd mowed, what we had and what percentage of the road we mowed and mm -hmm. so that we could look at it better. I had someone call and they didn't want theirs done. And then, you know, so we do... I will say you're trying to cut the budget. And we've also been very happy with this new guy who does a great yeah, job for oh, us. Really job. Yeah, the really best good. job we've had. And um, so he was more money. But we that's kind of what we're doing. I did try to put a little more money in it because I don't know if he starts charging us a fuel surcharge. I may not get any more mode than I did last year for 17 versus 14. But what he did on that road I'm complaining about will probably go at least two years. Oh, yeah. And I won't be back in that. Yeah. yeah. So well, once eight foot wide rope. Yeah, I can also right. ask him too if he knows his numbers for next year. But um, if but um, I I've received quite a bit of positive feedback on the ditching pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people have been very happy with. Yeah. Tell you one the one would see that's down to Dimux to that that or just past him. That's like holy shit. That road, is, that road hasn't looked that good since I've been yeah. born. Yeah, we gotta, yeah, I've had a lot of good feedback on the ditching. So I think yeah. I think that, that piece is going a long way. In people. Yeah. So can we sweep in? Yep. We plan on doing more. Well, that we had had complaints. Yes, people yeah. people complain. I know you find it hard to believe people complain. <laughs> no. People complain. They want us to sweep twice a year. Well, oh. I will say this. The gentleman who used to sweep for us doesn't. 
it, you know, stop doing it. And then we end up piggybacking off from, I think the state, because we were trying to find somebody. And I told you something about the Bradshaw guy that yeah, do it. So. So. And it's we, like Burlington, but he comes down and does a bunch of them. Yeah. And, um, but we may, um, so I don't know. He's pretty he reasonable. It. He could probably sweep your whole town in one day, which is probably like yeah, 15 can. or 1600 bucks. Well, the other thing too, is we, we had, we didn't do East Bethel. There'd been times when I do East Bethel yeah. because they hadn't been done in years. And, um, but in the main street, people have come, it's true. They hadn't. <laughs> so we, so we had, you know, people do it, but we yeah. had, um, so we have had complaints about that and people saying that they think we should sweep um, like spring and fall. And so I put more money in here, but. But the, I mean, the, the only point, we cut. the only real point of sweeping is to get rid of the winter sand. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, unless there's an unforeseen thing that happens, like let's say you have some type of flood or something where right. deposits on the street, but the winter sand sweep up, if you do that in May, you should be. Good. good so we'll cut that back check with the exactly what can we do right. we, and it's true we can cut that yes. we'll just say that gene cut it that's right gene said get it wrong he said he lives on dirt road just get used to the dirt streets from now <laughs> that's right so you see about cutting out of here um i i live on a gravel road so um so materials <laughs> You know, materials are crazy, um, but as you, as I said, I took the current 800 ton at a 10% increase over the current 105 that they wanted to charge us, um, which is their new rate. And that's how I came to the 92.4. So, so you lost me on the 92.4. So right. last year we budgeted 60,000. Yep. And that was based on 800 ton? I are we talking apples? I, apples honestly, here? I don't know. I'd have to look and see what Alan's contract was. I because I only it's ten percent over last year. The, no, what I'm you know you budgeting is this: we currently locked in for eight hundred ton at eighty eight bucks. Right, but they is that is that eighty eight bucks? We were paying like seventy something. Seventy eight. So it went up ten dollars. Okay, so ten percent on eight hundred. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Hank. So here. So it should have been that sixty thousand is really sixty six, sixty seven thousand, possibly thousand. So then, where's the other fifteen thousand increase? So you're thinking we're going to use more salt at mm -hmm. the higher rate? No. What I'm saying is, we we Bethel mm -hmm. settled in eighty eight because we turned around on the paperwork. Gotcha. But yeah. I think they made a mistake. They wanted to charge us one hundred and five, mm -hmm. and because that's the current rate. So the minute, so basically, if they hadn't made a mistake and sent us a price at 88, we'd right. be paying 105 right now. So what I'm trying to do is base- Budget 105. Times 10% for 800 ton and right. see if I'm, because I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I've just took current number. So unless my math formula is wrong, 800 times whatever, 10% or so. 105 times 10 well, it's like 24,000 increase would be yeah. 4,000 but so but at that point you know do we have to re-examine our salt many. procedures in town again like well, we did a couple years ago to limit some of that I, I mean, think that's true and we also have different people now that have a that are going to use less salt mm -hmm. so we may not so so anyways and I can I'll double check my math so okay. Sure. Check. I think I think you could use eighty four there. Okay. So I'll double check on that. And then um, chloride is fine. Um, gravel. Uh, just looking to add more material to the roads. Uh, so and we spent forty three last year. Um, Do you know that on that forty three that we spent? Mm -hmm. I, I again I meant to catch up with you and That's answer fine. these things, but on that forty three thousand. Do you know how many miles of roadway we got out of that? No. Do we no keep idea. track of that? No. So that mm -mm. we can figure out how many miles were. Because remember when we talked about mm -mm, no a idea. gravel road plan, and I think I want to say, I think the recommendation was like graveling seven miles a year. Does that sound right? Because we have. Uh, I don't know. Sure. We don't have a plan. Someone's plan. In my opinion, the plan should be all of the well, road should be done so many years. 
-hmm. whether that's seven miles a year or well, 10 I, miles I, a year and or whatever. And we're working on a, I printed it out. So we have a binder um, so that, and I was going to make one for you, Chris. So yeah. Ryan, you and AJ and Morgan all have a plan. And I went through and detailed all the work we'd done on it. <clears throat> since I've been here, what was on each road, how many miles on each road so was that we 60 can do miles actual... dirt roads? Is that what we had? 60 miles? See, 80, about that. Yeah. Because miles. we had 84 miles, miles of road and about 28 or so is paved. So but we anyways, should be working on a capital plan. Based on that, that so, I, based on that info I gave you, we should be doing eight and a half miles a year. There you go. It, it should be a seven. What I had looked up, Dave, um, a couple of years for her was 8.5 like paving for instance you try to do everything in a 10 to 12 year, year cycle and gravel roads because there's more erosion that happens on the gravel roads is they the gold standard is is seven years so every you should be putting gravel new gravel base on well or adding to your gravel base every seven years so so that's eight and a half eight and a half miles a year that we should be doing some gravel yeah so I, I guess what I was curious if we spent forty three thousand, you know, did that go to actual uh, gravel grading maintenance, or did that go to we had to fix this road that washed out, or we went and yeah, did this or that? You know, I can't answer that question. I don't know. <clears throat> so sand is a change because we're going to move to away from the organic material. We've had a lot of complaints about the sand over the last few years. We're trying a new material this year. And then if we move, we just need to stop buying sand with organics in it. That's kind of the consensus that I know Chris has said, the road crew has said, because what happens is if you get too many fines then it becomes very slimy and you bring the sand on and you end up just, you know, pushing it off into the ditches where if we use a better material, it'll actually help build up the road. And they kind of learned this a few years ago through a gentleman that taught the salt class. That's when we started dialing all the salt back in and making sure that salt spreaders were calibrated, et cetera. If you, if you use a great, a more granular sand or some rock base, like we're going to use this yeah. year, the benefits to that is one. Um, it prevents the, um, what they call the 200s, which is the fines yep. from building up, which then you don't have to chloride. Your road is, he is heavy, so it saves that you on chloride. Sense. Um, It also, it, uh, it also, in a weird way, it adds to your base rather than, rather than you're putting, you know, sand out there and you're getting no benefit other than just for winter purposes. Mm -hmm. So where do we get that? The same vendor, the same sand no. vendor? So there, no, we bought this year from Pike. Yeah. Um, you can also buy, is it Twin Valley? Twin Valley. Twin they were Valley. a little bit more expensive. It was a little more expensive yeah. this year, so we did look around. And so basically taking the natural sand and blending it with some 3-8 stone to, to give a better mixture. Now, yeah. it'll it'll work really well on dirt roads, but but that mixture shouldn't go on paved roads. Right. So if you go back to the paved road, is there, if there's a paved road that we are sanding and not salting, we should just use the regular natural sand, not yep. the three eight stone, because then you'll be sweeping up those stones all some. You know, then you will need five thousand dollars to go sweeping stone. Different trucks with different sand. And well, I, I talked to the guys about that when I was doing pothole patching with them and <laughs> quizzing them on that, and they they said they they figured out a system that they were going to use that on. Yeah. Um, cause I said, just make sure you don't, don't put that down on paper. Oh, geez, we don't have a mess right yeah, now. We don't have and they said they'd already been thinking about how they would manage that. And we don't have a lot of paved. Like yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, Gilead, usually they salt, you know, sometimes we, cause they had been salt going back and salting Gilead. And then we talked about using sand, but maybe just salt on the very apron, just because people are coming out onto a busy intersection. Oh, yeah. So, but again, you have a different. This should also cut down on road crew this time too. So it'll be interesting, different person in charge. So we'll if see. it's managed right, it should help with our salt cut down too. Because often so. a lot of the salt that we use, we use for cutting rather than yeah. ice control. So it might be there's a buildup on a, a road that we need to add salt to so we can cut it so that then we can scrape it type deal. So that should help out as well. But so some of the stuff, culverts, patching, guardrail are just the the prices are crazy. I did a guardrail project, and what yikes. what are you thinking? Do you have something in mind for guardrail? Or are you just budgeting yeah. the budget? Well, I'm budgeting because like we need to do because if have, you can skip it for a year, it may be 
benefit. That's a yeah. commodity that's gone up quite a bit. It has. Yeah, I just did a project. I just finished watershed. And but like last year, we got did, his bill. You did bridge rail, which the bridge rail is normally probably double the expense of a regular mm -hmm. WB ram. We have sections of Camp Brook that need guardrail. The upper amount that need guardrail. And I also I have a and there was a so Camp Brook is right right there we could spend just might all, those might be one of those of things that you may may want to pass for a year if yeah, you can do it because can can we pass because it's gone up by so much i know it's nuts and um same you know culverts are up um we need to do more patching material so we need more material more hot mix um you know highway rehab that matches eraf um i'm looking at right now if that bridge comes in pinello at 1.2 million then this gives us half our ERAF this year and hopefully the final half next year. So that's how I came up with that number. Um, the um, sidewalk improvement item. Yeah, I added 10 grand that, just because I that, don't know what you want to do. Should that best go under like Materials. highway rehab or something? Because that's going to be one of those, if you don't use it inside the year. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to carry that ten thousand dollars over. It's true, and, and I mean, I mean, we're not going to go around and just do ten thousand dollars with the sidewalk here. Four, you know? four squares, you know. So yeah, that might be better. To talk about it. But if we don't, if we don't, well, we could move it to highway rehab and change that to one thirty. The problem is, if it goes into another pl place, then we never pay attention to sidewalks. Well, you can. Well, we have a. You can it, financially. You. Category or something. Financially, okay. you could put it in, let's say, the um, highway fund. I just don't. Want and to you can tag it ten thousand to sidewalk. Yeah. You can have a subcategory. It's like we do bridges. So yeah, I just, I just, bridges. you know, one of the things we discovered with the Bethel for All thing is we haven't done much sidewalk for done any, many mm -hmm. maintenance because yeah. part maybe partly because there's no place for it in the well they, they just when i came here budgeting a thousand bucks i said what we can pour a square i'm like you can't even like you doing yeah. so and we have mobilize that big, for that so we're doing we have that big sidewalk project yeah. that we got the grant for but yeah. yeah we'll just do it as a subcategory i can move the 10 to the highway rehab and just well, if everybody keeps parking bridges. on we don't even need to do them That's just true well, oh i, I think, need sidewalks so i talked just gonna park on them. i yeah. talked to father grat the other day so, so we did have a good conversation maybe when we do that big project for the sidewalks that we get the grant money for it might be time to address at the same time address some of those bad spots well like yeah. the, the, the ones yeah. down here by the library jump, um, the ones with the jump yeah you know, up here yeah uh, just for future thinking could if we had something like that where there's the ten thousand set aside for sidewalk specifically and there was a grant opportunity that had matching could we use that yeah. towards matching yeah. because it's slated for us I'd love absolutely so yep, yep. absolutely um putting it into more of a capital fund so it doesn't just go away at the end of the year you may you may also want to have it more of a maybe the wording of it says sidewalks maybe like streetscapes or something because then it gives you a little more opportunity to use it for right. other things things that do Looks come like, with yeah. sidewalks it, yeah, um, repairing the ADA ramps off. Yeah, off it off. gives you that opportunity to use it, but yeah. All right. <clears throat> so fire department is, you know, really not up much. Um, those guys uh, get a stipend um, because just the laws of the way that volunteer fire departments work, they have not had an increase in a while. So I worked out 1080 to 1166, mm -hmm. but I can change that. Um, also increase the stipend. See, there's a stipend amount for chief fire for fire chief, assistant chief, mm -hmm. So that's all in there. So their budget is 4.56 over. Some of it is um a little bit of the heat. A little bit, yeah, it's yeah. heat. And there's you know nothing major there. Um mm -hmm. constable is still the same budget that you looked at before. I haven't really changed anything there. This so is question about them. I'm, I'm about the constable. Confused. Yeah, I'm a little confused about. These additional items that are in the column next to the yeah, that's column. if we went with the, um, went with, with the sheriff. With the sheriff. Yep, I, the I can add a label. No, I just wanted to make sure that and that's then, what that was. And we might want to just not to say pass on the constable one, but uh, now that there is a newly elected 
um, sheriff in Windsor County. He had reached out to me in regards to sitting down with Therese and I, because I had talked to him prior. Um, and he had one of the one of the things he campaigned on was an outreach to the smaller communities. So, you know, where you would have a sheriff that would patrol maybe three small towns or four small towns in a, a rural area. And that's that's one thing he really wants to do. So there might be because like right now when we were budgeting, it was basically saying, you know, the on the old school system of saying we kind of want somebody to be patrolling in our town. But this might be more like the older days of the constable thing where we might be able to share it with I'll make it up Rochester, Hancock and Bethel or something, you know, one sheriff that would patrol. The only thing there is we would have to figure out the animal control piece of it. You know, we would have to appoint somebody or hire somebody or something like that. But it's retiring soon. Yeah. yeah. You can't afford me. <laughs> we'll just we'll just put a critter cage in the back and you'll be all set. <laughs> we'll get you a long pole of the fit the new thing in it. You'll be you'll be all I got a pole about this long. I've got a hole down the middle. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah oil on that one yeah they in their new building they had a pretty efficient some very fuel efficient heater or a furnace when they built and two they keep it it's cold over there <laughs> it's yeah. not so warm and i also think dave might know that do they have radiant heat don't they ha do they have radiant heat in the floor of the fire department I yeah. yeah yeah i think they do yeah i think so yeah so the fuel question and the costs Mm -hmm. uh, both in terms of dollars yeah. and in terms of carbon. Something mm -hmm. that I think we ought to be looking at. Every place we're using fuel oil. Yeah. Let's, go get, let's go get an electric fire truck. They're going to get three <laughs> electric school buses that are going to be broke so down bad. out in the middle of mm -hmm. God knows that. where. I can't wait for those buses to get here. <laughs> I just can't wait. <laughs> I, I, I'm not looking forward to it because I already get like two messages a morning saying this bus has been delayed 45 minutes and this one an hour. I can't imagine if your kids were taking the bus out. Or burnt the bus up. It's going to be more than 45 minutes. I can tell you. Well, I think I think that would be one thing that we could task the, I mean, uh, at least the way I look at it is those are things that we should task the energy committee with, yeah, with coming up with alternative you know right. solutions for our municipal buildings and their grant that they just got was for some manpower to look at some things specifically mm -hmm. so right. i think we may have those answers and like maybe you switch over to a wood chip boiler or, or you have a and i mean the the biggest you know so obviously we're gonna when we build the new garage that'll take care of the garage um, like the fire station would be would it would or would be i think a mm -hmm. good candidate to have solar panels on top of it because it Mm -hmm. it, it has i mean where it's positioned yeah. you get like the longest oh. amount of yeah. yeah and that was one of the things um, that i mean those are some things i think are just kind of no-brainer things yeah. that you could do to there um, and too because that would take care of a lot of if, energy use and if it takes care of their energy use then it frees up more of our net metering for other from stuff. other stuff so you know that you know yeah. calling help so no, i agree and i know at one point i think the energy committee was looking at that but i don't know you know well, they just run out of volunteers they, uh, well they they, do, they have said they don't have the people yeah to do yeah. that or the expertise yeah to do an uh that kind of an energy audit. and we can bring in somebody to, but, you know, but to, look to at do it. an energy audit i think would be worth i think it would be worth it mm -hmm. certainly learn a lot that's for sure so the rec budget, obviously the um, uh, right here, the rec facility improvement fund, I have it at 10,000, but I don't know what they're going to do. They could want 30. They're still looking for quotes from vendors and, um, you know, had talked to Michael Parker. Ellie sent me an email. I, mean, I would say at this but, point, anything above 10, then it, we are probably got to be looking as a separate warning on the. Yeah. So I just budget. want, so I don't know what that number is going to be, but I just left it at 10, put it in a towel because I just don't know. Somebody had told, told me, and I didn't see it on your, your budget that it increased, but somebody had told me that the chlorine prices went up quite a bit. Is that not true or did I, I dream know. that or something? But, I think you dreamt it. Looks like um, we stayed within budget. Um, we, but I had told, I was told that the chlorine stuff went way up. Well, we also try to piggyback with the water system yeah. if we can, but that wasn't, Dietrich didn't mention, I don't, if she did, I don't recall, I didn't retain it, but we stayed within our budget. So 
I don't know. I can look at the, you know, the, rec the, the you know, that recreational um, new uh, building that we installed Western. there. Uh, help me. Six years after ago. Irene. The, like after Irene. that would be another good candidate to have, you know, solar power or something sure. for that on one side because there's so many trees there's there's in the too back much on side. that one yeah and yeah so i don't think you'd do that it because it's such a low into the shade pretty well lower energy today. use building that it could probably sustain itself someone should be talking to gw before they start building because they've got a huge footprint there that i don't want they're gonna put on for a roof mm -hmm. but it's gonna be a, a big roof and yeah. in the architecture they could build it so that it would take panels Mm -hmm. that, and that's they must there's be very few trees. That. I don't know about that because they're they're a Swedish company now. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Don't forget they got they mm. got a yeah. different a different so area. top echelon. Right. So with the the wage difference with the rec department, yep. can you just take me through that so Absolutely. I understand that? Yeah, sure. That's a change. So Dietrich is trying to phase herself out of the pool and basically will bring in somebody else to be the pool director. So her and I sat down, um, whatever, a week or two ago and went through it. And she, what we had budgeted for her was eight weeks at 40 hours and the new person, 12 weeks at 40 hours. In the past, we had done 17 weeks at 40 hours for Dietrich. Um, So, and in this, in this, excuse me? Phasing her down. Phasing her down. And it may go faster than this, depending on the person. If we don't get somebody um, that's interested in the position, then Dietrich will stay and do it. But maybe what we do is take one of the perhaps other lifeguards that have been there a while and give them some additional duties and try to maneuver it that way. So cut down her workload or she's she trying to, to cut down, cut down her workload out of the pool. Yeah. yeah. Where is she still going? Is it going to affect our overall budget? She's still going to work same number of hours only under a different department exactly she'll work more in the office and less mm -hmm. at the pool and um, which helps in a couple of ways for sure so we're just kind of waiting to see obviously what we get for you know for applicants um if we get someone who wants to take over the pool the other thing is what we're we're thinking is if a new person comes they can take over family fun fridays if they don't then Dietrich won't do family fun fridays we'll open it up to all the committees and say conservation commission you could do a night if you guys want energy you know if people want to do a night of uh, they could do a family fun friday and then sponsor it around their issue mm -hmm. or their you know thing so that's what i've done so that's why that looks different um and again that's why the wage changes so again uh dietrich gets works 30 hours a week so she gets benefits the new person at the pool would just be a seasonal so no bennies no payment in lieu of no bennies so Back and, to the um, and we're at about eight weeks as far as the pool being open. Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's seven. It you know depends on to the recreational fund improvement fund uh -huh. money. So if I remember right, we have sixty or seventy thousand in there right now. So eighty, right? eighty. Mm -hmm. So based on, I haven't seen a schedule in a while. So based on the eighty that they have in there, mm -hmm. what what are their plans for the next phase? Like I know, I know there's the mm -hmm. skateboard park conversation going on, right but yeah. like we used to say, it's yeah. no different than the capital improvement. You know, like was like we have this board. project coming, so we need to budget this much. Mm -hmm. And well, I think the pool. Well, it, Ellie was, it is going to be the next deal. issue. Would have been normal. Would have been if the pool didn't come up. I understand it that it would have been tennis courts. Mm -hmm. Um, but the pool is going to trump the tennis courts right now. Let the old stuff get broken to the point where it breaks you. There you go. Exactly. I mean, come on, you don't drive your old car until you're pushing it everywhere exactly. just so you can have a, a new bicycle. Exactly. So I know, I don't know. So I guess at this point, I'm not like, sure their master plan ever had dollars attached to it. I never saw a master plan for there with dollars no, attached. No, so currently it's, and finished. it didn't have a timeline. Either. No, I mean, it was just, this exactly. is the plan. It could take it's whatever five park. years. It could take 20 years, no, but that was the plan. Well, this is where it's um, park now. And well, I guess my question is I'm hoping to get grant money for the pool. You but, know, the 10,000 just seems like we're just, just putting money in the fund to put money mm -hmm. in the fund. So Currently. like, like if they have nothing scheduled, like, is it zero? Or if we do know that we're going to have to foot the bill on some pool stuff, uh -huh. should it be more, you know, I mean, right. Well, I guess we, just throwing it, 10 in there to throw 10 or, you know, yeah. 
or being it's a tight year, you know, should it be zero? And then if there is a good argument for a skateboard park or a pool or something else, like, do we just put that as a separate warning item? Maybe we should be asking them for uh, uh, a more um, comprehensive wish list. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want this, this, and this. How much does it cost yeah. and when are you going to do it? Well, because because if they told me, okay, I want ten thousand a year, and I'm going to put a skate park, and then I'm going to put a test court, but then six years from now, I need to I need two hundred thousand dollars to get the pool. I'm going to say no, 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 no. Exactly. I'm not going to approve any of your money. Mm -hmm. And that's something I could ask them. The pool is under, and currently under the office domain. We're dealing with that. Dietrich has had measure sent measurements, pictures, and everything to Gunite. Then she got a. a she had told him, look, we don't care if we square off the edges. Like, we don't need to round this. You could square it off. We could do, um, but we need to make it a true zero entry because it's not right now. And so she we got she got laughing because she said, look at this picture. She The guy didn't have the dimensions quite right. And he'd made this like very fancy. She's like, $800,000. She So she was emailing the guy back saying, no can do right. this is i sent you the you're gonna need to take I a zero you. off the end of that thing. yeah <laughs> and so she currently is dealing with a gentleman from gunite which is we talked to a local gunite vendor they recommended this one for commercial for or for like for municipalities so yeah. <laughs> she said mm -hmm. and i think he sent her multiple designs but she was like eight she's like now, what's up two towns over <laughs> exactly so we are currently working to get pricing for the pool updates that's nothing yeah. we tax the rec committee with but you're right is we should should nail them they should be nailed down yeah a little when they're taught the kinds of money they're looking for yeah but i think they should be nailed down to a mm -hmm. more stringent timeline yeah i'll and ask her. exactly what they're going to do well, especially like right now for instance i mean we have to make some master plan. harder decisions this year than normal just because of the cost of things have risen right and if we want to keep things at a reasonable rate for you know our citizens then we're gonna to have to have some tough conversations with things and like for instance if we if the next thing is to put in a tennis court or a basketball court or whatever it is mm -hmm. and they have 80,000 in there right now 80,000 is enough money to build a tennis court or a basketball court so yeah, but if the pool is going to break down well that's what i'm saying it's like yeah. so well, is it's or whatever uh, yeah. but i think the pool is going to end up being a its own item right that's i mean it's going to have to be well we also have to look and see if yeah. uh, no I, no i think, you're, I and think we have that's what money. that's what i'm the question I'm trying to ask is uh, the pool needs to be rebuilt. This is no, it, it sounds to me, it's not. Yeah, it's, for the most part. It's, yes. it's not a maintenance, it's a, not a deferred maintenance thing. No. Yeah. Is that the kind of expense that the town, we need to take to the town and say, I think the so. pool needs to be redone. It may be. It and we're going to have to we're going to have to float a bond for it. Bond well, for it, or we're going to ask for grant money. To or take whatever. it out of the rec budget and let them do it. Yeah. So we're, we'll, and, and we won't, honestly, we're not going to have any of those answers before you pass this budget. We're just not. But you're a couple of years away. From yeah. Because we're, we're going to have to band aid the pool for another year. And hopefully through this winter, we figure out what we need. Right. We're going to try to pass a bond vote in March currently for the two point whatever million dollar second phase of the water project. So I also, we need to have opportunity to even look for grant money for the pool, which we haven't yeah. had a chance to do. So that's one of the things that'll be nice about transitioning Dietrich as yeah. away from being pool director into the office. We're actually gonna have a little more staff time to deal with some of this stuff. Yeah. And I'll ask her about chlorine costs, um, parks and public places that is up just because I had this question. If you look at uh, one well, version- up if you go full-time, right? Exactly. Yeah. I... So if we stay with two seasonals, a seasonal for the summer, seasonal for the winter, this was just my option yeah. um, because, you know, I had one, we only had a couple of applicants for the mowing and it may be that we end up having to outsource that mm -hmm. and not have an employee in house doing the mowing. But the issue with that is it, it's nice to have that person because they might, you know, like he was able to repair fence for us and mm -hmm. he, um, you know, pressure wash the deck over at the, or the, not the deck, at the, fan shell the floor right. and you know we can help richard you know um 
do uh, hydrants and things like that. So it kind of, that was the nice thing about having a summer person that actually worked for us because they were doing more than just mowing. Um, I think we just got to stick with a part-time yeah. seasonal. That's what, You know, at least for this, I yeah. mean, I just. No, no, I just try to put it all in there. Um, <clears throat> so some stuff for other basic replacement or repairs. Muni, uh, so, okay, so obviously, um, municipal office, this is reducing. I just said we're going to add Dietrich's hours here. Um, I had left the 10,000 in contract label because, frankly, I could not remember what you said. <laughs> when we, remember that, Lindley? We talked about this and whether we were going to do, hmm, we talked about instead of energy coordinate, you know what I mean? Like adding more hours. This Did we say to leave this at 10 or were we going to go to 20? I, honestly, I could not remember. What was this for? This was the, we were talked about if we ended up being able to take advantage of something with two rivers, like other contract labor or a regional coordinator that was, we were able to pick up hours for, you know, I can't remember if we said 10 or 20. I would like to see, I would like to see a little more input from the people we're going to be in the regional group with and where they're going. Because I would hate yeah, to say, no okay, idea. we're going to do this. And then all of a sudden, whoops, well, Rand out doesn't want to do it. Oh, our Roy Upton. Oh, it's just you and Rochester. And, and so far, we, we have agreed to nothing. But okay. what we had, you know, Two Rivers had put out that survey, which was great. And we're hoping that they're going to, you know, change their model, do like a little bit of fee for service. So we could pick up some of their, you know, opportunities for stuff from them. So I'll leave this at 10 for right now. I'm just going to put a question mark beside it because I just could not remember. So notes but my, yeah. my brain is not recalling what we said no i i got you so um if we're gonna in, if we're gonna increase the payment of lou that will affect this budget so i'm gonna leave it at 10 and just we'll go from there um hold on i want to just record there have been conversations between bethel's energy committee randolph's energy committee the town of Royalton and Rochester yeah. and uh, Brookfield about a shared Pretty position. Good. So those Thank conversations you. are happening. Yeah. But what did you put for your I could be wrong. Is like those said, conversations said, are happening so at this level. Three, this okay. make it These people so have, the people at this level have no money. Trying to get those questions out. It's this yeah. level where all the money is. And are they, are these people having the conversation? I am. Um, yeah. So currently, you see, you see what I'm saying, Jane? Yeah. Because we had some, I had a lady in here talking about all these wonderful things that we're going to do. When we asked, where's the money going? Uh, we haven't got the money. Well, yeah. wait, wait a minute. If you got no money, uh, it, it's a short conversation. Yeah. It's true. So, yeah, at this point, we just had a number in there. Well, it's always in front of the horse. Yeah. This is Vermont. <laughs> that's where i'm coming from the 10 grand was a it was yeah we just kind of i couldn't remember if we said we were going to increase added, it you said you would add something to it i don't Ooh. yeah i thought it was going to be a lot more than that but yeah i'll put a question i put a question mark beside it because i couldn't remember when i was doing this well right. if we will kind of put our heads together plus two once i make some changes to the budget overall colas which affects everything mm -hmm. Um, town officials, you guys have been working on that for a while. The listers, I made the appropriate adjustments there. Um, went through the government operations budget with Pam. Um, so that's pretty much that. Uh, anticipating. Uh, yep. We're not. Do we have? Well, we have more that we're selling this year. I mean, a I higher mean, quantity. Is that why? Yeah. I don't know. It's also offset. Uh, buy some revenue so when you see because well last year yeah under budget we were at seven thousand six hundred yeah. and it is offset by a revenue because on the front page reimbursed tax sale expense we made you know five last year i'm saying three this year so <clears throat> but i obviously under budgeted last year so i'm just trying to make make my adjustments um the local appropriations um i've made a note if i had seen it Otherwise, I'm telling you it's italics are just estimates. I did not know what to do with Warva. I added an 8% increase only because I have just heard that they're looking at possible large budget changes. I don't know what that means. Well, they gave us a pretty, what I would say, 
pretty so. hefty one last or the one we're in now. Yeah. Because normally they only gave us like a one, two percent maybe. And then and then I want to say the one we're in right now. And they're looking and they give us five percent this past year or something like that, remember. which was the first time in a while. Well, I think they pretty much held it straight for a couple of years and then they gave us five percent last year. I just have a all that was kind of a bit of a saying. big deal. All I know is what they're saying that they're looking at a big I've just heard it. So I just threw something in there as a placeholder. Your debts, your debt is your debt. Um, can't really help you there. Uh, school and then uh, county taxes. I haven't heard yet. So I just did a little bit of increase over last year. Mm. Our alliance fee. Also, I'm hoping they're going to hold fairly steady, but I did budget that. So mm. that, so let me make these changes and do a little research and hopefully have some, you know, we'll knock it down a little bit and hopefully it's just a little more palatable. Did, did you and say, please. did you say that the, individuals for the library we're going to come in and speak with us back in two weeks in two weeks okay. in our next meeting the library is coming they have an appointment at six o'clock okay gotcha so yes so they were good i did run that by the uh school oh yeah about How the combination of that, uh it? yeah it didn't go over very well but yeah. <laughs> you know i thought it would be kind of a neat idea to have a you know i thought so the library at the school is on the corner of the school so there's an opportunity maybe yeah. to make it a little bit bigger and you can make I it agree. a community one but yeah, no, but I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a dead conversation on arrival, but it wasn't well received, but no, but I thought it was an interesting idea. And you know what they were, they were going to talk about, I mentioned it to, um, but I mentioned you got to do it to something Lisa. there. Cause what'd you say about three years? They thought they were going to run out of money in three years or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll find out for sure. I had a great conversation with Bennett Law. He's on their board now and really took a hard look at stuff for them. So he okay. just did really good. So you'll get back to us with some of those tweaks. We'll look at that again. Yeah. Um. Yes. Excuse me. What? Oh, it's in there. You didn't see oh, it I did. in there. The yeah. select I did. time went way out. Oh no! no I, I, I did. I oh, just Dave. Just Dave. Dave. Just Dave. Just Dave. Dave. Just Dave. Just Dave. In town. Just Dave, Dave gets, gets raised. Raised. <laughs> How do I get that stipend? That's right. Uh, we need uh, so oh, that. American <laughs> American Rescue Plan money. So, um, I had told you at the last meeting what uh our my conversation with Sullivan and Powers. So if we took the list, which we had, you know, all looked at, I put it in your packet all the time. If we take $162,135, which is going to be the general fund surplus mm -hmm. caused by the ARPA money for wage replacement, and we move 20, oh, that's not right. <laughs> what 162135 is not the right amount of money um it needs to add that's funny i apologize you just, it, it's we're gonna add the 396 and the 20,000 mm, well what a wing nut what was i up to <laughs> good lord how did so i the, the 162 135 is uh, nothing yeah i'm just thinking how did i come up with that yeah, <laughs> listen to him. The slush fund. Yeah, I was just yeah. saying. <laughs> wow. I'm okay. Has Dave been grief? I apologize for that. Yeah. So it's the 396 plus the 20 would be our ARPA money. Good Lord, Therese. Oh, look at that. Let me take a look and tell you what's in there. Sorry about that. Was that 162, 135? Was that the money that we paid to date for the pumps and stuff? Or Oh, that was probably the... Uh, Probably the one motion transfer 162. The pump and the generators was that 162? that was the 162 130 because that number sounds about right. Yeah, so that would be. Oh, okay. So here I'm saying that. Okay, so. 160, oh, okay. 162. That's what it is. I'm sorry, yeah. that's what it is. Okay, so 162 135. I'm sorry, I was right. The general go fund the goes sewer. to the capital sewer fund. So yep. period. And then twenty thousand dollars to the highway capital equipment fund, yeah. and three hundred ninety six thousand zero six nine sixty eight to the capital road fund. I guess I just so, thinking my math. So up. once you put that money in the capital road fund, it's not eligible to be used on other items. Right, it would be used so for we're roads. Right now, making bridges. a decision to lock that money into that. Yep, as because what well, we've been talking about for yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No. So the. So yeah, so we would pay the 162, 135. We'd have already, you know, that's the would go to sewer, twenty thousand dollars in the highway capital equipment fund, and then the rest goes into road. So that becomes 
roads, bridges, um, you know, class four road maintenance. So, I mean, we had, well, don't forget what we had talked about is also Chris had asked about covering our nut for the local match for the $1.6 million worth of grants. How much money were we sitting on? How many of those grants could take ARPA money? And those grants all get run through the capital road fund. So like doing the sidewalk, you know, I asked, so I've asked everybody on that list, but we can also table this until next week. But you also like right now to move that ARPA fund money into those categories. Now let's, I'll just make it up. Let's yeah. say, let's say we wanted to use $5,000 to upgrade the website, the website it's, for instance. It's already in here. But I'm just saying, it's if there's something that line. maybe we haven't a hundred percent officially, maybe there's something we want yeah. to do with some of that money, mm -hmm. you know, we could in the next budget cycle, we could theoretically take a little less. Reduce the capital. Yeah, you could reduce okay. the capital road yep. that we're going to put into to use your you general fund money or and something the, like that. The five thousand dollars for the website I left in the general fund budget, right. so that we'll deal with it. You know, to take now. Care. Just remember, technically, once something goes into a fund, I mean, the, the select board can has the authority to move, move that to another fund if yep. we wanted to. You, but, you know, we well, just thinking all of the but, ones that were suggested, all the other folks that suggested various things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're basically saying, yeah. no, oh, we're not going to do that right now. Right. That's exactly yeah. what we're saying. Before we go moving this all to the Capital Road Fund is, do we look at some of the things like the $10,000 towards sidewalks? Does some of that, some, some of this go towards that to offset the budget amount? Mm -hmm. So like, as we're looking at our budget amount for- We take the 10 grand out of the budget. Cycle, and we say, say that gonna, we put- Right, or even the other question I had was from the road fund, like you're talking about the, the match, could we do the Pinello Bridge ERAF, the 44,000? No. We can't do that from this. No, because that- but our, our, So I guess it's the creative thinking of what what can we do? Well, we- I Where does that do money some, get put to like offset yep. stuff for the- So next. remember that spreadsheet that I gave yeah. you guys all about the $1.6 million worth of grants that wrote, mm -hmm. and I had written on it what we could do for ARPA. Why don't we table this till next week? I'll make sure you get that in the packet as well as the list so you can see that the majority of those funds allowed us to use ARPA money as our match, which is basically going to come out of this fund and run them through. So why don't we just table this for next week? Because someone could make a motion. To but we it. very well could do exactly what Lindley's yeah. getting at is, you know, instead of funding $10,000 for sidewalks in this next budget, mm -hmm, absolutely. some of those ARPA funds could, yeah, would they're that in up. that, you know, could be used. Right. In case we wanted to do something on sidewalks or something like that. Yeah, but. sure. So if someone makes a motion to table this, we'll do that. All right. Okay, all in favor? All right, town manager's report. Anything left that um, um, we did budget? So, uh, Dietrich. so Dietrich got that grant. Uh, civil court decision. Um, I vacated um, the all delinquent taxes and water sewer charges. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. We do per state law because that trailer was abandoned. It tricks into some, and obviously I didn't do that without legal advice. Yeah. Um, so well, again, I guess that, I don't know. I mean, how we talk about that, but because we were on the wrong side of that. Yes, we were. And it's not fair. So no. now I, I just assumed that if you, let's say own the trailer park mm -hmm. and there's, I'll make it up. Let's say there's 15 plots yep. on that, that people lease, right? Mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Is, is why wouldn't we as the town want to bill just the owner one bill rather than bill each individual tenant? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because in this case, we have, we have no recourse Mm -hmm. you know i mean other than a trailer it's not worth anything right? right so we don't it's not like there's a a building that we can go and tax sale or something mm -hmm. we have no recourse on that is that the first trailer yeah, we come yeah, yeah. yeah. close to the school see that's yeah. what bugs the hell out of me because I, the person who, who took it over is going to make a profit yep so there's going right. to be so we lose that 100 percent on, and we lost everything exactly and this person's going to come in there and make money right yeah. well that's why i'm saying well that. I say that because don't forget the the um, the landlord or or the owner of the property also spent significant money 
uh, going to court and, you know, with trying to get ownership of it and that whole thing. But to answer, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure to take that person no, no. out either, but I'm, I'm thinking the people that are getting hurt where now a private person, we want to come in and well, I guess the, the only thing the I think on is, now I can make some money and I could be so, wrong, but there is one line that goes from the main line to the park. I believe so. And then from the park, it's then split into mm -hmm. each individual residence. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe there's more than one main line. There's more than so one I think there, what I'm getting at is I think there's an opportunity that water system and Mayan has their own water system. So the opportunity. Yes. But yeah. so there's right. two. So I'm saying, why couldn't we just build? There's one valve that could shut everybody off in the park. Exactly. Park. You'd have to install. So why couldn't you just? So you can. I'll answer both. One is you can. Let's backtrack to your first question about taxes. We cannot, because the trailers are unlanded, we cannot send a tax bill to the owner of the trailer park for the trailers because they're not owned by the trailer park. Right. They're owned by the individual, so they're unlanded trailers. We could possibly install a master meter or two at the road. And then bill Richard's trailer park for all the water usage, and then they would have to individually do that. And then they break I it up individually, right? How they're set up, and of course, you know, with ten pass in the way, I'm. Everybody I, pays their own right. Exactly. He just <laughs> actually just redid the leases to uh -huh. put in abandonment. I'm sure you did. Uh, wording. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just it's just a weird situation that we. It is. We lose a hundred percent on the deal. We, you know, we yeah, have no. Yeah, I wonder if if it makes sense to talk to Tim about putting in some language into the lease that talks about their um, responsibility to pay water and sewer and taxes and whatnot. Because that's what they did in at a trailer park in another town. They did so that they, <laughs> once they became delinquent with water sewer, I said to them, "You can get evicted because you're now in violation of your lease with the um, yeah. trailer park." So I can, I'll toss on Tim an email and, yeah, you just, and see what he knows. Here. Yeah. Um, they're not signed yet. Mm. All right. I'll ask yeah. him. That's, that's, so anyway. Mm. Mm. So anyways, so we'll, that was done. So that's it for town manager's report. Mm. Oh, just taxes are due tomorrow. If you've not paid your property taxes, or earlier. tomorrow is the day. All right. Uh, meeting minutes from the 24th. Anybody have any? So you also had a question about like, the DOD. You know, just to talk to What's Brad the or, or Rick. Well, it, it looks like that whole setup there is too close to that pumping station. And I know they've already proved the garage that's there, mm -hmm. and there's another small shed that's there. And now there's going to isn't the small one gone now? No, there's, there's something there's changed there when I drove by this weekend. There's going to be a pole barn. He's putting up a pole, uh, like a two-sided pole barn thing yeah. off of the big shed. Yeah, but it all looks like it's. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what the distance is that it needs to be, yeah. but it's right. You know, right next to that pump station. Yeah, and oh well, we have an easement. Well, I think we would have to double check because we, I don't believe we own the property. I think we have an easement. Yeah, I don't think it's ours. It's not our property. We have an easement with, I think, Bergeron and um, Mr. Tracy. And um, so we don't, yeah, I think that that's it's not our land. For us. So well, we had, we had an SNF type of move there. You know, keep their vehicles a certain distance away from that pump. More station. like on an environmental know. thing, yeah. yeah. They had an environmental. No, it was because they didn't adhere to the zoning because they had an initial permit that granted them X amount of spaces, right. and then what they were doing was they were blocking our easement to enter into where the pump station was. Yeah. So basically, yeah. they just had to move their. They stuff. just had to give us access and, to our easement. Right. Yeah, they can't be in the wellhead protection area either. Sure. So. I think that's how that shows right. out. But you know, certainly I thought the I thought the um if I drove by, I'll have to look tonight when I go by. The shed that was closest to the road, I think that's gone. No, there's a small one on behind 
You know the one that's one. right by the driveway there? Yeah. Because I drove by and I was like, oh, something's different here. Oh. And then I drove by again and I was like, oh, that's gone. Like this weekend or something. Mm. Huh? Um, but he did a lot of work on the the new garage yeah, yeah, this whatever. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the shed that was close to the road looked like I was gone. Or that. maybe he moved it on another yeah, part of the was property, down, but down it wasn't, wasn't in that corner anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. So were there any changes to the minutes? Hear none, just need a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, all in favor? Um, so you had plenty of minutes. You had some. Uh, oh, we got to do Paul's thing too. Well, yeah, we're still done. So we had financials, minutes, and um, we got that thing under Nessus under. We got to fix December. Yeah, December's calendar. Unless you want to meet on December 26th. Oh, we'll just... I, don't mean I think we should move the 1226 to 1219 and just do back to back, but I don't know what your school board schedule was. Third Tuesday, 20th is when I meet with oh, the school. Oh, maybe oh, back to back. You're not going to the 19th. Hmm? Yeah, so he, he's free on the 19th. He's just busy on the 20th. But yep. uh, So are you guys okay with going back to back yeah 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 we have to do it what do you want to do you tell me at least uh, once a year the, yeah the 26th would be our meeting so she's saying going and doing the 12th and then the 19th yeah the day after so christmas so we'll move the 26th up to the 19th mess up this week because of thanksgiving no so that why don't we why don't we december we december the, we're talking about just i know that yeah but, but we're not thanksgiving's here that's not Dave's thirty. Um, I'm so fine with. So we're not meeting on the seven on the twenty fourth. I mean the twenty first. Are we? Are... No, the, no. The twenty eighth is our meeting. Twenty eight. Oh, okay. Are you talking about November? Well, I'm he's sure... he's working his way to December. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> Just give it a sec. <laughs> we found his calculator. <laughs> now we're finding December. Hey. <laughs> we have to split them up next week. I tell you, no, we did not. Like school, together. we're gonna have to um, change the assigned seating and not sit together. Okay. So ideally, we'd be moving the 26th meeting to the 19th. Right? Yeah, so we'd meet yeah. back to back. Is everybody okay with that? Yep, we can do that. Yeah. Um, vote the next two meetings. All right, I'm going to write that down. The 28th and the 12th. Lindley. So November 28th and 12 12, Lindley will be remote. Okay. Because we have problems with that, Lindley. It's fairly we, so do we, I. We text you. We think you're we're holding the meeting. You're having. And then I'm like, oh, she's having Zoom issues. I got the orca setting up another speaker, thinking you're coming. I'm like, we are bad. We have really <laughs> got to get a handle on what she's up to. So I'm I writing it down. On what I'm up to. That's all right. So I'm writing that down. So yep, I think so we're that's fine. Okay. All right. So that's what we'll do with that. <laughs> all right. When do we have to have the warning situated by is that the first of January? Yeah. If I can I gotta well, whatever. I'll die. Because don't we week. have to because the warning wise we gotta what we gotta put the marijuana thing on this year, right? And then Yes. And then we were still talking about the school. Yep. Still pass it. Well, out. Me, so <laughs> Wait, so we'll say that again. We had yeah, because we have that, and then we were we're going to talk about the Australian. Oh, we haven't heard any more about that. Did we agree to do that? I can't remember. Did we agree to put the us? We didn't agree to put decision, and we haven't made a decision. Okay, well then we'll have to talk about. But that. I'm just saying we got a couple of decisions to make yeah. for the Meryl, warning, which Meryl may not be it. just one time. It might take a right discussion or so. Two. So we may want to talk about I'll, the warning sooner than later. I'll draft it with the opt in for um okay. for marijuana, just because. And then I actually spent some time this weekend rereading the updated zoning bylaws that we were working on. I looked through the street escapes, you know, for both streets and parks and read the marijuana, both the local cannabis board and the packet that I gave you guys last time. And I actually sent Rick Benson an email because there's a couple things. You, If we don't form a cannabis control board, then 
it kind of causes some issues. You know, we may have to go with what the state says. And, but there was some wording about zoning and it makes whoever's on the cannabis control board, which if it's a select board, then you all have to become a lot more um, versed in zoning regulations than you are right now, which no. Mm, so punt it to the DRB. Yeah, right. Exactly. I know. So it'll, so it'll be interesting, mm. but that's only if it passes, we'll have to, but so yes, the warning is going to contain. That wording that I don't like, have they done anything to that wording about where if you want you grant a personal license, they, you can't take it away. No, they have not changed that See, law. I don't understand why everybody's okay with that. Well, it's the state. We don't have a choice. Remember, we're in Dylan's but, but rule the state. state. Why are they okay with that? I, I don't know. I can break the law, but I can't take your license away. Yeah. They now that if if somebody they can be why well, that neglect or something you can yeah take they it can be fined they could be you know there's things but basically what that state what if you're was, in good standing if you opt they out can't take it away. so say Bethel opts in wheels come off the bus yeah we and then out. Bethel opts out two years later. That, that person does not lose their license if you know if they're running a you know, they're good good establishment yeah. they're good if they're not then they're going to be fined and dealt with through another manner through but the basically state. they're saying you can't this person gets a nice business going everybody opts out you can't mm -hmm. you can't revoke it just because the town said no yeah. I don't want to revoke it I just want someone else to even be I, responsible and I agree with Dave I just well it doesn't make any sense because like if all of a sudden I don't know within our rights if the town decided to be a dry town <laughs> then you wouldn't be allowed to sell alcohol right right i mean but in this case if we decided to be a non-marijuana town afterwards you still the person so, so would still be selling sell cannabis control board but still have cannabis yeah. sales yeah. happening yeah i, I would mean, say there's, yeah, yeah there's a conundrum it, it doesn't make sense yeah. like dave says it doesn't make My sense guess but, is, yeah and then but they, they haven't changed any of it from what I understand. They have not. I read it this weekend, yeah. yesterday, as a matter of fact, both the one I gave you and the local cannabis control yeah. board. And I actually emailed Rick Benson because there's some zoning gray area that I may have to follow up with Kevin Geiger on and to, in order to advise you okay. correctly, get some information there. But all right. So, then yeah. we had um, Paul's resignation from the trustee of public funds, Bethel's representative to Two Rivers. Um. And the deputy health officer, even though I know he really wants to be the deputy so health officer, don't accept them. He's uh, he's still in. <laughs> I, I, not, I think he's. I, I don't know. I think that's the great thing about it. We just say, ah, yeah, sorry. Right. I think you're right. I think I, he's I think the he one started that started that thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just probably want to resign tough. Just you know, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Bad, so bad. Your service. <laughs> it was a lifetime yeah. appointment. He just didn't know. <laughs> So we'll just that. just need a motion to accept that. That's right, Gene. He's right. So move. Just need a second. Oh, I think second, oh, Dave. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Do we, do we have any individuals that are interested in those positions? Do you know? Well, Paul or Teresa? I think or, trustee yeah. of public funds will stay open until March, till town meeting. That's an, elected That's an elected position. And I don't currently have- But you wouldn't need, there's no need to appoint somebody between now and then I on that? I don't or? think so. I think and that- That's a three-person three board. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you, so you got two people. It's Rick really Benson. don't. That's a pretty light Sandy. job, right? Well, Usually. You need two signatures on a checkbook. Mm -hmm. um, Sandy Farrell is basically got the whole thing on the control we, we you know converted over from Carol's methods into right. a spreadsheet electronic <laughs> so I thought basically it. Uh, you know signatures and I thought his book bookkeeping was pretty neat. It is. He just used to do it on paper. Yeah, so he, she, so, she just created a spreadsheet. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I met with Sandy we today. Don't need, don't need to have a deputy. Don't need to have a deputy. And, no. And um so Chuck has got it yeah. really under control. I mean, he's really. I think it was worth it. He stepped up. That. Did you find right. out from the health right. people what we have to do? No, okay. You, you don't, you'll never get out. It, it'll Christy take you hours and hours of phone calls, and you'll still never get oh, out yeah, of there. I can email Mary Elsa. I tried and tried. And strong. And You're all know. set. And then people would be I'm like, how do you keep calling me? Oh, I found your number. It was on the state site. I'm like, 
Yeah. That's not supposed to be there anymore. I still get calls every once in a while. So <laughs> no point in the right direction. Yeah. So nobody knows about the vacancies. So no one okay. has stepped forward. But the trustee of public funds, you can leave vacant until I just didn't know if we day. had to appoint somebody and no, I don't think so. And I then think. the audit uh, in the two rivers. I have no idea yet. Once we we can just wait until after election and then point somebody again, or we can maybe now that we somebody people are actually going to know it's open. Maybe someone will volunteer to do it. I don't know. We'll put something out on front okay. porch form. Okay. Well, if you want the job, Gene, my advice to Gene is this: attend one of their meetings before you sign up. Did you and say those were remote meetings? They have both remote and in person. Oh, they do. Yeah. 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 So their in-person meetings are in Woodstock mm -hmm. um, at the senior center. That's uh, what you know, if I look into it. Yeah, I me, could be I'm I, just saying I could be talked into it. Well, <laughs> let me let I me go over with you. Well, and I can I have to send Peter Gregory a note. Um yeah, I guess send Peter a note. That he was, well, then if you send him a note, maybe yeah. just give him Gene's email and maybe he can invite Gene to the next meeting. Gene could go, say yeah, your name, and okay. yeah. Well, the next meeting is a Christmas party on the fourteenth. Then he's definitely. Then, then he is gonna. He's gonna sign right. Is, I don't know if that's gonna be. I haven't heard if that's gonna be Zoom covered with Zoom. Okay. <laughs> so if you just mention, you know, give him Gene's email, then he can invite yeah. Gene, and then Gene can attend a meeting or two and see, and then let me know. And yeah. if not interested, we'll advertise. Yeah, I, I okay, sure. that'd be great. Thanks, Gene. All right. So, anything else before we enter? Executive session? No. Nope. So just need a motion to enter executive session. In a second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. So this will be for um Yeah, Paul. Right. Yeah, so I'll make it I'll just I'm gonna spell it out and quote the statute for you because sure. I don't I didn't Perfect. have time to write it down today. And um, then we won't need anything coming out of it, so yeah. 